everybody. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? We are back. We live back in the dungeon. If you haven't done about now, make sure that you like this stream. Make sure that you comment, share, but most of all, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And also, look, all you have to do is just become an Overdrive member and get those perks. Not going to hurt nobody. It goes back into the channel. It does not go into my pocket. It goes back into the channel. And we are trying to get things going on right here. See, we got a couple of people coming in. We got a couple of people coming in. What up, bro? Who? What's up, man? Who jargon, man? Um, we're gonna have to talk about some uh, NCAA basketball. Uh, probably like next time, man. Um, but um, as y'all see, look, y'all see the title: Spring football is back. Uh, especially for most of the schools that's in the swag and the meac and the What's up, Dragon 1998? Okay, I got you. I got you. Just shoot me an email. So, so other than that, man, other than that, uh, we're going to get this thing kicked off right now. But we're going to start with the news first, first and foremost. And... I'm going to go ahead and put my slide up here. here. So, first things first. Ed Reed can get over BCU. Ed Reed. Ed Reed. What? Can get over BCU. What? Um, there was a shooting near the campus. Um, there was a shooting near the campus, and well, Ed Reed was saying that he was saying that basically nobody's not covering. Um, they not cover nobody. No news outlet is covering what's going on over there, but. But you have, I, he basically said he curses on live. <laughs> he curses on the live and everybody freaks out. Well, the reason why people freaked out, the reason why people freaked out was because of some fact that it wasn't the main thing that you called about. It was just the fact that you are trying to represent the school. You're gonna you're the representation of the school. Um that's the reason why people freaked out when you did, went on that live. So it's not it's nothing. I mean, the the school has every right to say, Well, we're not gonna go move forward with you. They had every right to say that. We got Israel in the house. What's going on, Israel? Got my 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 cousin Chuck Hunt, as always, coming in in the building. Jacinto, yes, I do. Got the little John. <laughs> Hi, B. How you doing? Yes, he does need to move on. He does need to move on. Not the love. I. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Chris Dukes, what's going on? What's going on? But yeah, man, it, it's, it's time for Ed Reed to get Bethune Cookman out of his mind. Out of, get it out of your system. You said what you said. It is time. It is time. It is time to get it out of your system. Um, Bethune Cookman has moved on. They have a new coach in Raymond Woody, who is an alumnus of, of Bethune. Uh, he filled in his uh coaching staff the way he wanted to fill it in, and I feel like they're gonna they're gonna make some progress. It, it'll be some rough patches, 
it'll be some rough times right uh coming ahead for a little bit but um in the end in the end they're gonna rise back to i guess to where they was i want to say pre me act but you know in a sense they'll be competitive <laughs> what's good dr g yes he does need to stop. it's time for him to stop it uh <laughs> Lauderdale, what's good, bro? What's good? Uh, but the thing about this is, though, if you want to be hired by somebody, go up to go up the folder. What's good, bro? <laughs> what's good, man? Good to see you, bro. It's been a minute, man. I, I know. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Man, but Enrique can't get you know, he can't get over the throw cook me like bro, they don't move on. They, you like the bitter, you like the bitter baby mama. <laughs> no, that's real talk. Well, well before I, I comment, what did he say specifically? Well, basically he said, um, I mean I'm gonna give you some my own words, but I know this is what you know, in the sense of what he's saying. He was saying basically like nobody was covering what nobody didn't cover the shooting that was, he said that was on Bethune-Cookman's campus. Uh, I guess it was over the weekend, but everybody was, had their uh, panties in a bunch when he cursed out, you know, administration on Instagram Live. But the thing is, um, and he tagged a couple of people. Uh, I think he said, uh, and this was coming from Jeff Lightsey. Shout out to uh, Lysy. Uh, if in fact he tagged Jeff Lysy, <laughs> he tagged Jeff Lysy because uh, he uh, talked to him uh, a couple of times. Also, I think he tagged Shannon Sharp and he tagged uh, Bomani Jones. And he was saying that nobody's like nobody's not giving this any type of attention, but. What I did, everybody had, you know, eyes was all on me. Because it is, you know, in a sense, it's it's tragic because I wouldn't say I don't think nobody uh passed away from that shooting, but it was a couple of, it was two students from Bethune Cookman, but it was off the campus, it was at a park close to the school. So I, it, it's not going to get national attention, unlike what we saw as far as with, you know, the conditions of the school and with the interim president, the board of directors, the board of trustees and stuff like that. Yeah, that got national attention because us media folks, uh, you know, new media folks put it out there. The students put it out there. Even Roland Martin, who, you know, some people... Most people are not liking right now. He put it out there. So, it, but this, I mean, this wouldn't that wouldn't garner that that type of attention. That shooting wouldn't garner that type of attention. It probably garner the local attention in uh, Daytona, but it wouldn't do it nationally. But you go ahead and say what you got to say, man. So it sounds like sour grapes, you know. Over the situation, am, am I accurate with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's how I view stuff like this. Mm -hmm. It's like black people who don't know HBCU culture. It's gonna be like a reality check, right? You don't know the, the idiosyncrasies. You kind of come through it like, oh, I'm Air Reed, which one of the greatest safeties ever who played in the NFL. If we keep it real. But it's like, yeah, the HBCU circle roll a little different than what you used to. Right. And, you know, I'm not here to tell any camp they write, you know, because I know there's a big controversy about, oh, B BCU was, you know, in the right, or Air Reed was tripping, or vice versa. You know, you got to kind of split the bit there. But he doesn't understand how that, how this faction rolls. I say that, mm -hmm. I say this because I'm, you know, HBCU alum. Right. And it's like 
it's like a curve of learning that people who are not, you know, indoctrinated in, in the HBCU experience, and it's, 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 you just don't know how, how it goes for, for whatever reason. And I think right. Ed is still in that learning stage. So he's, he, you know, and, and Ed's a passionate guy. He's a Raven. You, you know how the Raven guys are. They, they all over the top. It's all or nothing with them dudes. Right. And, and, and I mean, we can go Ray Lewis. We can go Jacoby Jones. Like, uh, all those dudes are all or nothing. So mm -hmm. he's kind of in that discovery stage with the HBCU experience. And so he's, he's still talking about something that he doesn't quite understand in, in prime. If we're being honest, still trying to put the HBCU experience at Colorado. I know some people feel some type of way about it. Me personally, oh, I don't. So much. We feel a whole bunch of type of way about that. Man. Yeah, for, for sure. And I, I I don't hate nobody who, who feel way, way a way about it. Me personally, I don't. I just understand his process. He he learned a good taste of what the HBCU experience is. Mm -hmm. And he sees the, the feeling of it. And because I mean, if we're being honest, that's what all brought us to it. And I I I'll make myself personal. I went to Stephen F. Austin State University first. Yeah. I went to Mountain View College. And when I saw the movie Drumline, I, I knew I wanted to go to HBCU. And I said I've I'll, I'll rip. I would never go to HBCU because I saw all the bad stuff. Even though I'm a third generation Prairie View alum, but off rip, I didn't see it. So it's a discovery process is what I'm saying. Ultimately. And, and these guys are going through that discovery process. And so that, that's why they, they kind of hung up on stuff that people who tried and true HBCU, you just know that that, that come with the experience. And, and that's why you, you got this, the, these oddball comments from guys like Ed Reed and, you know, I can say in prime because they, they don't, quite get it all the way does that make sense that makes that makes perfect sense that makes perfect sense um to me you know to me like if you you would never know what type of love you would get from hbcu unless, unless you you know what i'm saying you go and you experience it for yourself you know what i'm saying even either either from um a non-student perspective or from a you know from the eyes of a student uh you just got to go there to experience it for yourself big facts so man I, i'm gonna say it just like this i'm gonna say it just like this it we all gotta we all gotta you know what I'm saying he just gotta like look they moved on from you you need to move on from them you know what i'm saying they got they, they they got they pick of the litter, uh, and, and Coach Woody, you know he 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 put out a good, you know what I'm saying he 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 got a good coaching staff. Uh, one of the people he got on there just playing the NFL, Nick Collins, you know he got him as his cornerbacks coach. So bro, it, it's time to just move on. <laughs> like I'm about to move on to the next subject, y'all. I'm about to move on to the next subject. Well, let me say this, Doc. And All I right. see um, uh, my, my man in the uh, comments saying, uh, "Why are we talking about people who are there? Let's move on." But if, if we're being realistic about the landscape of where we are right now, and has it moved on from you know? Because let me step back up, another step. When, when, when Prime came, it took HBCU content from a YouTube level to a mm -hmm. media level to another. I mean, let's just be real. Because I'm the same guy. Who I pressed Jerome Solomon, who was over the, uh, you know, the the, the mid-major to low-major D1 thing in the Houston Chronicle. Yeah. When I was an athlete at Prairie View, I yeah. pressed him, like, why are you not covering more Prairie View, Texas Southern? And he said to me, when, when people look at it more, I'll cover it more. So I took that in at 2007. I took that in as, as information, right? right? So now we're, we're in a stage where most people, you know, we got more exposure than we ever had. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of just, you know, setting the landscape properly about why we are where we are. So that's it. I mean, I'm not trying to harp on Prime. I'm not trying to harp on Air Reed. I'm just trying to, yeah. to level set the conversation properly. That's nah, it. you good. You good. Anybody else got to gotta say on this subject? Oh, shit, we... DJ in the building, man. Shout out to my yeah. boy, man. Hey, as soon as I got on, I see my boy Zoe in the house, man. How y'all doing, man? What's what good, up, DJ? DJ? <laughs> what happened, DJ? What up, Doc? What up, Hoop what What's man, going on? If y'all ain't got the like button for this, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, man. What, what you got? What we got going on? What you got to say about this subject? Before I move on to the next. Move yeah, on to the uh, next. 
I'll, I'll say this real quick because I want to definitely hear what, what Zoe has to say. Ed Reed, um, let's be honest. He's still bitter that he lost his job. And for some reason, he just can't move on. That's my only problem with the former uh, NFL players. Not all. When you lose a job or something didn't go your way, you want to harp on it. And you just can't – because I read something, right, when when Ed Reed was complaining about a, a, a shooting, it was off – it wasn't even near the campus. Yeah, the it was off campus. campus. So it was much to do about nothing. Again, most HBC most HBCU fans that I've talked to, no matter if it's Bethune or even Jackson State, they've moved on. They're happy with their new coaches. Uh, it's no ill will, and it's just – it's just what it is now. Today, JSU is happy about the offensive coordinator, the defensive coaches, the uh, the interviews they hear they heard today. So they're ready to move on. It's it's just really a bitter coach, and I respect Ed Reed as an NFL player. He's a Hall of Famer. We get all that, but all I can say is just move on, be happy, and let the new coaches do what they do. All right, what you got to say, Zo? And hey, Mr. Ford, how you doing, Mr. Ford? Hey, how you doing? You can hear me? Loud or clear. Okay. I, I actually don't have much to say about uh, Ed Reed. I mean, Ed, I mean, <clears throat> I just think it's the obvious things that are there. I mean, he's allowed to feel how he feels. I mean, one thing I will stand in the place of is that, you know, no one man or woman can tell you how to feel when you're the one that's having to go through with it. Now, that's on his account. But mm -hmm. I mean, but even with that being said, yeah. I think more I think more now than anything is he still, in my opinion, in my opinion, I think he's still showing why he wasn't the right man for the job. Right. You know, right. I, I'll, I'll just leave that at that. But because, I mean, you can take all the X and O's, you can take all the what you can do from a macro standpoint. But at the end of the day, you're a leader of men and you're a teacher. And he's still showing, you know what I mean, much mm -hmm. down the line where he is right now. And that's not a good – and I feel like, honestly, for him going forward for another potential job, this is not looking good for you. You know what right. I mean? So, but again, even with, even, even with me saying that, he's still allowed to feel the way he feels. Because, it's, because, again, that's him. That's, he's the one that has to live with that. You know what I mean? So it's right. understandable in that regard. But just because I can understand something doesn't mean that you're going about it the right way. That's all I got to say on it. Hey, hey Doc, let me ask real quick. Go ahead. I, I saw a video that went viral, you know, because University of Arkansas is doing a thing right now in the NCAA tournament. Right. And I saw my former coach, Daryl Hawkins. He was mm -hmm. my coach at Bradley. And, and people are like obloviating of, of how good of a guy Hawk was and is and what he gave to the University of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. and, and he was passionate, bro. But I do remember when he was the coach at Prairie View, his scope was off. So when I look at guys like Prime, look at guys like Ed Reed, when you come from like SEC, ACC, you just don't quite know the culture all the way. You just right. don't. So w when I watch these guys speak and they talk, I know where the place to come from because I remember as a junior when I signed at Prairie View, Coach Hawk was in my living room. And he gave me mm. my scholarship to talk to my parents, right? Yeah. So I, I understand. I choose to understand like with, with these HBCU discussions. So I choose to understand because I've seen it and I know how like the perspectives of off if you were quote unquote used to a higher level, quote unquote, right? Right. So when, when I watch Ed Reed, I know he's going through the understanding process. And so I just choose to to like just see it as it is and not be upset about it because I understand like the average HBCU fan like you know you, you ain't effing with with what Air Reed talking about like because he because right. he you know he came in hot he came in the way he came and you know we've moved past it to, to the brother's comment but that's just where, where where they're at and it takes a process to actually learn what the HBCU experience is so it's just interesting to watch what what the maturation process is for guys who quote unquote are from a higher level that you got to understand what the level is that, that you're trying to ingratiate yourself with. And it's like, we ain't rocking with, as a collective, what you're talking about. And either you, you, you move with it or you, you get rolled over. Right. I want to add that. What you got to say about the Mr. Four? We're going to move on to the next one. <laughs> I'm just glad he didn't get the grambling job. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Mr. Ford. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, so we're going to move on to the next one, man. Uh, as y'all heard earlier today, you know what I'm saying? Grambling legend and Mr. Nick, New York Nick legend, Willis Reed passed away at uh, 80 years old today. Um, Hall of Famer in, you know what I'm saying, Basketball Hall of Fame. Um, other than, you know, to me, I feel like other than Eddie Robinson and Doug Williams, he was probably like, he was probably like on the Mount Rushmore uh, of legends that came from Grambling. <laughs> Uh, what do you have to say about that, Mr. Ford? Uh-oh. Let me see. What you got to say about that, uh, Hoop? Anybody got to say anything I, about I got something to say about it, man. <clears throat> yeah, I, I got I, it. I, Somebody else. Go ahead. I, I, I was going to say, man, um, rest in peace to uh, Willis Reed, man. Um, how, can I, how can I say this? His his passing, you know, he was eighty years old. But man, I I, I want to reflect on his career. I'll say this, and I think uh, I know Hope is probably around my age, but I think it's unfortunate, man. Um, you know, a lot of us we remember Willis Reed. I don't think people can grasp or understand like what he did in the finals when he came back to win that game. And I just I hate it for guys like him and Butterbean Bob and. You know, some of these guys that actually played at HBCUs that went on to the league and had these great careers, and they're just washed. It's almost like they're kind of washed away in the history of it all because right. I don't think people really understand the magnitude of how good Willis Reed was. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost like he's a prisoner of the time and the era that he was in. Like, you know, the Knicks have been so more bound for so long. People don't understand how great the Knicks were back in the day, even right. with uh, Phil Jackson, you know, playing for them. You know, I mean, you're talking about Willis Reed was a dog, man, a left handed dog. Yeah. And now, granted, when he played, it was more of an old school game. Willis Reed reminds you of a, a big center that was killing everybody at the YMCA. That's, that's what his game was. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, uh, it just it's. You know, my heart hurts for, you know, for his family, but I just I, I really feel like his legacy get lost in the sauce. I know a lot of people will, will, will see, you know, and they'll see some of the highlights and see some of the numbers. And it's almost like it's a, a game and a time that was so far away, like that it, it doesn't even exist. And I hate that for him and his legacy. But it's up to us to really champion it. Um, not only him, but all the other guys that played in HBCUs back in the day. That went on right. to these great Hall of Fame careers. I just that that's the that's the, outside of him passing away. Because when I heard it, you know, obviously to me, like a lot of other people, you go back to that video of him walking out the tunnel, limping on the floor, limping on one, to, one leg, you know, on one leg to wheel his team to a championship, right? So we all automatically go to that. But it's just like, man, he was so much more than that. Man, the dude was a dog, like yeah. for real, for real. And it's just like you don't even know it. And matter of fact, if he hadn't passed today. No one will be talking about Willis Reed and his basketball exploits. Agreed. And so, and so that's the, I think that's the travesty and the tragedy of it all. You know, and I really thought about that earlier. I'm like, man, people really don't have a clue just how good this dude was. Right. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> let me add this to the conversation. And I think that was a great way to land the plane on, on the, the whole dynamic of Willis Reed. Because again, him coming down that tunnel was classic. With, with, with the messed up, you know, leg, and he came back into the game and, and was a hero. Like, any Knicks fan who don't even know he went to Grambling w- would reference that as, like, one of the greatest Knicks moments beside Reggie Miller doing, the, you know, his thing in the garden and, and things of that nature, right? Or uh, Michael yeah. Jordan putting up 55 in the garden. So, Willis Reeves to be champion. And I think that I love these spaces because we got to start accentuating these guys where they're alive. Another guy who uh, I played against, Trey Johnson. Yeah. Like, that dude was a headache, man. And, and Doc, I know you like this because you're a JSU uh, alum. Mm-hmm. We got to start, in our own way, memorialize these guys. Like, Bruce Eugene. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just so many guys. Like, if we could just find our own way to, like, appreciate these, these people. Because, you know, on the mainstream media side, you don't mean nothing until you do something for, you know, a national team. But we've seen these dudes do it in the trenches, man. 
and and I, I I love the fact that you know I hate it through death, but you know we, we got to memorialize guys like this man, like like Willis Reed. Right. Like, he came into that right. stuff, man, and you know because Grandma known for football, we all know that. But on the basketball side, you got a guy like that who came in there and transcended the NBA in his own way. So yeah. um, I, I love discussions like this because, like you said, if it wasn't for death, we wouldn't be talking about this, this man. But we should, though. We should. Right. What you guys say, Mr. Ford? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Did I? Can you hear me? I think I went out. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, I met him when I was a student there. Uh, I remember talking to Coach Hobby about him. And coach told me that when he went to the uh, Knicks, he went up there with Bill Bradley, Cassie Russell. And mm -hmm. he told me that both uh, Cassie and Bill, Bill Bradley, I think who later became a U.S. senator, was right. from Princeton. I think Cassie came from Michigan or somewhere. Both of them could shoot the basketball, but neither one of them could play defense. And he told me how Red Holtzman liked uh, Willis Reed because Willis Reed kept the guys together. You know, he was like the, kind of like the, you know, the, the enforcer. You know, everybody yeah. listened to what he said. But uh, oh, he, he was he, a champion. Yeah, he, he was a champion now. Um, like one of you, the uh, people here on the panel just said about that. That's an iconic scene in the NBA when he comes out that tunnel. I think that was 1970 championship and he's injured. Because, mm -hmm. see, you put that up against... Uh, the 69 series when the Boston Celtics played the LA Lakers and Wilt Chamberlain wouldn't play because he said he was hurt. And yeah. then this guy played on one leg. Willis Reed played on one leg. You know, so this guy here is one of the reasons the uh, NBA is a trillion dollar uh, business. Because you got to remember now, the NBA is much younger than the NFL and definitely much younger than Major League Baseball. Because right. I don't think the NBA didn't get it started. Until, uh, somebody correct me, I think 1946, right? That's correct. Yeah, because uh, the first teams were all white. They were basically kind of like Jewish boys. You know, they were uh, Northerners. But this yeah. is one of the people that helped make, like I said, he helped make the NBA a trillion dollar business. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, DJ. Yeah, even though I'm 30, going on 31, uh, I'm a sports historian. I love history of sports. Uh, on my time, I always go on YouTube and just find any classic game. And for Willis Reed to remember the 1970 Knicks team. Yeah, they were picked to lose yeah. to the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. And y'all know how good. Uh, not only Bill Russell at the time is, not only Kareem because he was young, but Will Chamberlain. He was that yeah. guy. Yeah. And for him to overcome the injury and to play with so much heart, yeah, that moment is the greatest NBA moment in history if you talk yeah. to historians. Mm -hmm. Because it shows the will of the underdog. And that's what I will always remember him by. Like Hoop Jargon said it best, we got to appreciate our legends as they're living now. Not just like if they're top 10 in the NBA, but those who have paved the way. We got to do better of that. It's, it's stop just only celebrating when they pass. Uh, yeah. My condolences are with his family. Right. His grandkids, uh, alumni, alumni of uh, Grambling State, and know that his legacy will last forever. Yeah. Yeah, man. So it was, it was, uh, Watching the video, like I said, watching the video of him coming out of the tunnel with just on one leg, you know, then you look that, you know, later on, probably like 20 years, you know, 15, almost 18 years later down the line, Isaiah Thomas did almost the same thing, you know, in the NBA finals going out there on one foot um, and went try to will his team to a victory. You know, you don't see stuff like that. And then also you gotta understand too, he's the last he was one of the last ones to win win a championship with the Knicks. They haven't won in fifty years. I was just about Absolutely. to say that. I was just about to say the last championship they won. <laughs> they yeah. have not won in fifty years. And he's one of the last ones. So of all the, that team, I think him, uh Dave the Butcher, he's the, he passed away. Phil Jackson. 
Yeah, Bill Jackson was on that team. Exactly, still, yeah. Uh, the guy from Tennessee State, uh, Skull Barnett, he was uh, on the first championship. Yeah. Earl Monroe was from Winston-Salem. Clive Frazier. Yeah. Clive Dean, Frazier. Uh, I, remember Dean Memager? Dean like Memager him. was out of New York. Uh, Henry yeah. Bibby, I think, was on one of those teams. It's he was from UCLA. That, that, that team was stacked, y'all. Hold on. Was it was it one of the Ernie and Bernie still on the team? No, no, no. Uh, that, that was later on that line. Then. Yeah, okay. that was before them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that Ernie and Bernie came down in like the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Well, in the, in the yeah. early 80s because uh, Ernie and Bernie was in, uh, they were still in school. They was in uh, yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. They didn't go to Tennessee. Uh, like, oh. Bernard went to Golden State, I think, before he went to New York. That's right. That's right. That's he right. He went out Adels. But yeah, man, we gonna we it's crazy, you know. You hear this? We did the, you know, I did a memorialization for Kofi Hemingway. You know, he was the, you know, I didn't even know he was the voice of Bragg Stadium until somebody said something about it, and you know, down list, you know, hearing, seeing this come up on my timeline on Twitter, and it's like, you know, this crazy. Um, so I always say, man. You know, you know, hug your loved ones, man, because you never know what's gonna happen the next, you know, afterwards. You never know what's gonna happen afterwards. But we're gonna move on because we're gonna move on to the next thing, and the next thing is man, it's spring football, y'all. It's spring football, Mr. Ford. You've been waiting oh. on this for a, <laughs> for oh, a yeah. minute. Oh, um, yeah. so we're gonna start off with Jackson State. Uh, I watched, uh, I listened to some of the interviews uh, that he had, and why not get the info from my, more, from my bro, Zoe? Because he's there in Jackson. So, what what did you see, or what, you know, from your eyes, like, how was the first day of practice? Going? All right, well, let me disqualify myself before I even get started. Because, you know, be, being that I'm a, you know, JSU, you know, insider and a JSU fan, but being that we're on a, we're going to discuss the matter what we're discussing, I'm taking my blue and white glasses off. So <laughs> this is straight, you know, unbiased, just JSU info. Um, what I saw this morning, I'm saying that because everybody's pretty much getting in the point of starting their uh, spring season. Um, today, being that it was day one of the official kickoff of the uh, T.C. Taylor era, Man, it was a, uh, it was refreshing. Um, the first thing before we even hit the field was the first thing that jumped out to everyone who was there was the energy in the room, the energy in the uh, Walter Payton Complex. Um, it was refreshing. Um, it was very energetic. Everybody was ready to go. Um, got out to the field, man, and it was just, it was a, it was a typical first day. Um, everybody's flying around, happy to be out. Um, I think they scripted the practice very well. Um, a lot of new faces uh, that came in over the um, winter break that are in. And uh, it was just good to see the small nuances because bear in mind, not only is T.C. Taylor a first-time head coach, but everything is new um, there. Um, it's different. Not so much just saying this is a new head coach and a new staff, but um, it's a complete makeover. Um um, with the JSU football program. So to see, you know, the just, all the small nuances from the way the practice was scripted, the way we did the uh, stretching, because, again, we have a new trainer from the stretching to, you know, how we're going to line up. Everything was a, was a first today. Um, but there were some other small nuances that were great to be excited about. I'm actually looking forward to going to practice in the morning. And that is, you know, looking at, you know, base sets that we ran, looking at, you know, how we're lined up uh, with base defensive uh, formations, um, <clears throat> you know, even looking at the new drills that we're implementing that we didn't do last year. So all those small nuances, you know, came into an effect today. So it was just good to see. Um, great first day. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, I know a lot of other schools right now is doing a uh, – they are doing a – spring practice right now so uh i gotta look into some more people as far as for like prairie view texas southern 
Uh, I got to get my boy Craig Hall up here from Texas Southern, so he'll tell me what's going on with them with Andrew Body, uh, Grambling. Check see what Grambling is doing there uh, with Hugh Jackson. Uh, uh, just going on like, look, we've been waiting on for spring practice to come along for for a minute, and you know we, you know we talking about the what ifs and all this other stuff. That's trying to see it and um, put it out there. But from what I'm hearing, um, as far as the quarterback goes, oh, speaking of them, when I said Texas Southern, I got, <laughs> I got Andrew's mama in the in the building. Um, uh, the quarterback situation for Jackson State. You know, it's a three. It's a it's a three man race. Uh, it's a three man race. Uh, you got Zion McDonald, who's the short, shifty, uh, quick, but he can throw the ball. You got Philip Short, who's more of your. Uh, he's he's a dual threat. Uh, work got to work on the accuracy. And then you got Jason Brown, who basically been there. <laughs> well, I got, I got, I got to be honest. I hate to even say this, but believe it or not, they're all three, all three quarterbacks are dual threat. Believe it or not, Ooh. all three are dual threat. Ooh. But, but also, um, let me just say that um, I, I know everyone's pretty much. Um, hold on a second. I know everyone's pretty much looking and thinking that. Um, uh, you know, every, everybody saying it was Jason Brown, and and that's fine. I get it for all the obvious logical reasons. You know, oh, he's a, um, um, you know, he has a, you know the college experience, so naturally we're going to just roll with him. But I'm just going to going to tell all you guys, don't count out Zach McDonald. I know no one's really talking about him, but it is a legit three man race for quarterback. That's not hyperbole. That's not coach speak. That's not. Oh, we're just saying something to put some fodder out there. It is, it is a legit three man quarterback. Matter of fact, when it came to like just running reps uh, with the 11 on air today, all three took reps with the first, you know, with the perceived first team. They split, they split uh, things amongst all three of them. So it is a legit competition. And if anyone can say what they think about who's going to start, they're just grasping at air right now, to be honest with you. No one could sit there and say, "Yeah, we know who's going to start." Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna put my hat out there. Uh, I'm gonna put my hat name in there. I'm gonna say that, um, just by interviewing him, uh, him and I want to interview all you know the other two too. But I, I put my money on Jason Brown getting that spot. But like you said, it, it is a legit competition. For that top spot for quarterback. Um, what are y'all, uh, uh, anybody else on the panel, what do y'all think about what's going on with Jackson State as far as the QB goes? Yeah, uh, I just hope they figure it out, man. Oh, go, go, go ahead, DJ. Is the DJ speaking? Uh, oh, no, my bad, brother. Um, go, go, go isn't this profession three quarterbacks? And, and what I've heard, and so correct me if I'm wrong, my brother. But I've heard this constant thing. Those three quarterbacks, Zion McDonald, uh, Phillip Short, and Brown, they could all st start for any swag team. I'm not trying to put pressure on them, those brothers, but that's how talented they are. So whoever starts, it's, it's going to be a quarterback that can win you games. I'm very confident in that. What I'm also excited about, I listened to the offensive coordinator, uh, Maurice Harris. He talked about implementing the tight ends. When he said that, I was like, let this church say amen. How yeah. many times have we been saying that the tight ends got to be used more? But I'm excited, man. Uh, I trust in TC. He's a good brother. He's a damn good coach and has a great uh, assistance. Like Mr. Forrest says, all about the assistance. <laughs> Don't hire your friends. So I'm excited what I'm hearing. Well, what he well, what he mentioned, uh, he stated in his uh, press conference was that behind the quarterback, the tight end is the most uh, critical position of the team. Mm -hmm. And 
I can just tell you from being at practice, he is spot on when he says that. Um, tight end play will be very critical for Jackson this year. Uh, tight ends and multiple tight ends will get utilized this year. Um, we have four really good tight ends. Um, you know, we have Hayden Hagler, um, who was there last year, uh, the transfer from Marshall. Um, you have Jensen Riley, um, who looked amazing today. Uh, yeah. And you have uh, DJ as well as um, uh, uh, Mullins, um, the transfer from South Carolina, okay. who, you know, already had rapport with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, Jason Brown from South Carolina. And he's from Whitehaven, and he already has rapport with Maurice Harris, the OC. So, you know, there is even some continuity there. Um, I, I'll, I'll just say this. The Jackson, this Jackson State team that you'll see uh, this upcoming year will look night and day from what you saw on both sides of the ball. What do you think about Mr. Ford? I, I, I don't mean to try to steal nobody's coaching number, but when I saw that guy, Maurice, what's it, Maurice Harris? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I see a future head coach. I am. Um, Maybe in the swag, MIAC, somewhere, but I see a future head coach. Now, that kid you just mentioned about uh, from South Carolina, you said his name is Mullins? Yes. To me, he's a pro. I, I see pro potential in that kid. I really do. I, and, uh, well, you're, now, not, you're not far off, but I'm going to tell you, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Ford, I, I, don't even, I don't mean to cut you off, but I'll tell uh-huh. you what. DJ Jones, I mean, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, DJ DJ is going to, is hands down the best tight end return best returning tight end in the conference, and okay. DJ has a really really good chance to play himself into uh, a late round draft pick. If you go back and look at the returning tight ends coming into the conference, go look at DJ Stevens' numbers. Right, and 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 um and we're going to use tight we're going to utilize the tight ends a lot more than what we did um, last season, not just from a passing standpoint, but from a rocking blocking standpoint, but also. You got to look out for Jesse Riley. You guys got to remember, Jesse Riley is 6'5", 220 pounds, runs a 4'4", 5". Now, what's and his home? Where is he from? He's from uh, uh, Louisiana. We, we we recruited him as a true freshman. Okay, okay. I think I remember him. And um, and he mentioned, both, he mentioned both players today. But DJ Stevens is going to have an outstanding year because – Tim Bruce, I will give him credit, really elevated his game, and DJ will even tell you himself, he's right. totally transformed the player, and he he he's night and day from what he was when he arrived at Jackson State. And I, I have to leave this caveat: DJ Stevens was an All-State tight end from Ridgeland High School here in Metro Jackson. Right. Do you want to take a guess at who his quarterback was? Zion McDonald. Zion McDonald. Zion McDonald. Oh, yeah. So we got some people. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we got people says tight ends got to be utilized more. Um, I'm gonna say it just like this. Coach Harris is he's a mad scientist when it comes to yeah. offense. He's yeah. a mad scientist. I, I I'm gonna say it just like that. Just looking at what he did at, at Liberty those years under um um uh, uh, Hugh Freeze, even when he was over when, when they was at Ole Miss. And turning Evan Ingram into uh uh uh, uh all American from Ole Miss at the tight end position, it you know like that's gonna pay dividends. And um, what you just said, Mister Four, I think he is a future head coach. Yeah, don't I know where he, don't yeah. know where he's gonna be at, but right, I, I think right. he is a future head coach. That's what I, that's the, when I saw the interview today and I looked at him and then I look at what he's done in the past. Cause I'm going to tell you something now. He was a gangster. Hugh Freeze was a gangster, but man, listen, Hugh Freeze, I'm, I'm a Hugh Freeze fan, man. I'm a Hugh Freeze fan. I ain't going to lie. I loved him. Uh, was that DJ Metcalf? And like you said, that Evan Ingram, them boys that was up at Ole Miss. Oh, I ain't know he had Dawson Knox. Guys. Huh? He had Dawson Knox too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, hey man. I'm looking for them to turn out some big time wide receivers out of Jackson State under this uh this staff right here. I'm looking for some big time boys to come out. And by the way, is Malachi Malachi Wagner, was he out there today? No. Okay. And it was somebody I meant to ask about. It was another wide receiver. It'll come to me. I'm getting old. 
but I know I was going to ask about Malachi and it was somebody else. Hmm. What, what about the big wide receiver from uh, Ohio University? Is Shane he good? Hook. Yeah, was Shane no. there? Shane no. was not there. Okay, okay. Right. Hmm. I didn't know he was. I ain't know Coach Harris coached that White Haven. Ooh. Yeah, he actually uh, a small little nugget. I personally that, know Coach Harris that's personally. That's Memphis, right? White Haven is Memphis. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. he's oh, in Memphis. Yeah. So yeah, Memphis. small little, yeah. small little little nugget here. Coach Harris, actually, his um his nephew, which was Jason Harris, actually played quarterback and came out of White Haven in nineteen ninety five, the year before I graduated high school. He played with my cousin. My cousin's name is Robert Tobert. They actually set the national high school record for touchdown catches in a half and in the game. They beat Memphis Northside, which is closed now, 92 to 6. And uh, Jason Harris was the quarterback. Okay. What? You said what? He, he beat him what? 92 to 6. Oh, hell no. Nah. I'm going to quit at, at halftime, bro. <laughs> yeah, so Jason Harris set a national high school record for nine touchdown passes in the game. My cousin Robert Tober caught seven touchdowns, no, six touchdown catches in a half, seven touchdowns for the game. Man. You remember the, the, the quarterback that Alabama had out of Memphis some years? This was Bat Bryant's last years. What was his name? He was out of Memphis. I couldn't tell you. He he went to the uh they had like a USFA. I can't oh, I can't think of that guy's name. He was he was a wishbone quarterback, but he went to like the USFL. Rock, uh, mm. I want to say his last name was Lewis Walter Lewis. That was his name, Walter Lewis. He was one of Bear Bryant's last quarterback. Do you remember him? Was he up there with your cousin, or that's before no. his time? That, that was before then. This was in yeah. 1994. Bear Bryant right, yeah, died okay. in 1982. That's right, because uh, Walter Lewis, I think, was one of the first black quarterbacks at the University of Alabama that started. Because initially, I think they had him running the wishbone. Uh, we got a question that said, what about, uh, is Willie Gaines still on campus or he's still That's there? That's who I want to ask about, Willie Gaines. Okay. Uh-oh. I was about to so, send But yeah. Uh, okay, there you go. What? So is Willie Gaines there? I'm about to get him back on her. Okay. Yeah, hey, I don't so know. I, My bad, I don't uh, know what happened. Oh, okay. Now, nah, we were looking for Willie Gaines. Well, Somebody asked about Willie Gaines. Not there. Okay. Not there. All right. Yeah, okay. that's what I meant to ask about Willie Gaines. Yeah. So okay. I, I want people to understand, so like everybody to understand what what you about to see with Jackson State this uh on the T C Taylor. Like what, uh, what 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 type of I can I can I can answer that easily. Um, let me let me preface by saying this: before Deion Sanders came to Jackson State, from the year two thousand up until let's just say twenty twenty, right? Or or uh, yeah, let's just say twenty twenty. That's twenty years. In that twenty years, we won the swag once. Then we won a swag once. No, twice. We won in two thousand and seven. Mm -hmm. And we won. No, we won in two thousand seven. That was it. And yeah. so uh, we got Kamiji, and Kamiji went to the Swag Championship game four times. He won once. We won in two thousand and seven. But that was the worst twenty year stretch in our football history, right? From two thousand to twenty twenty. Now, if you go back from let's say the previous twenty years, go look at our record. You know, so it's like we went through the worst stretch in our school's history in that particular time. I say all that to say this. There's a huge generation of people who saw Jackson State in a certain type of way. Well, I don't fall in that category because I'm 44 years old and I know what we what we come from. And Mr. Ford can vouch on what I'm what I'm about to say. Yeah. People who know Jackson State football, we're an HBCU blue blood. And yeah. Coach W.C. Gordon won the yeah. SWAC championship eight out of 10 seasons. Yeah. You got to remember, we own the SWAC consecutive win streak with 28 games. Now, you got to remember, that doesn't sound huge, but you have to understand, when this record was going on, we only had seven schools in the conference. So you had six conference games. So basically, we were undefeated for over four seasons. 
You know what I mean? And we're on a 20 game winning streak as I currently say this. So to answer your question, what Jackson State is about to go to with TC Taylor being the helm, and this is what I give Deion Sanders the biggest credit for coming to Jackson State for, is that Deion Sanders really rejuvenated the fan base. I'm not talking about just because we were winning. When we hired James Bell, he he literally almost destroyed Jackson State football. In more Amen. Ways than one. Amen. In more ways than <laughs> one. We lost a huge segment of our fans, and a lot of fans just stayed away. Even though we had a great showing year in and year out, we lost a lot of our fans. The greatest asset that Deion Sanders did was he rejuvenated the entire fan base. Right. And so now that sleeping giant is woke. And so now you add to the fact that you bring in Jackson State's favorite son, TC, as head coach, who, by the way, was on Deion Sanders' staff. you got to always add that caveat in there. And see, uh, what a lot of people don't know also is that TC was on the staff prior to Deion Sanders being hired as the head coach. Well, TC and Otis Ridley are on that staff because of Ashley Robinson. And so now you have that segue. Basically, what TC does, he, TC buys the old JSU, which we know and love, because TC Taylor is a James Big Daddy Carson disciple. He recruited him, played under him. TC knows full well the JSU standard and the old way of what we think about JSU. Yeah. Now you add well, what he got with Coach Prime. It's a marriage of the old tradition and the new way of doing things. So when I tell you that, all the people who are like 35, 30, well, 30 and under, you're not going to recognize what you're going to see going forward because going forward, we're going back to what I would like to call the W.C. Gordon days of Jackson State football. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that we're going to win at that clip. I don't really think any coach can. Well, I'm not talking about the winning. I'm talking about the JSU mystique, the JSU nostalgia, the JSU fan base being what it was and what it is and what it's growing to be. And that's what I mean when I say that. And we're actually starting it with the look of JSU because that red block is back. And anybody who knows about old school JSU football, <gasps> that's what we mean. Yeah. The red block is back. And I'm talking about every Saturday, you're going to see that red block. So this is not the 19, this is not the 2000 JSU or 2010 JSU. This is going to be the 1980s version of JSU, 1990s version of JSU. That's what you're going to see. And, and let me add this now don't forget Bob Hill. Bob Hill was was major at Jackson State too. Yeah, I, I, he, he, here's the thing. Bob Hill was, but when you think of JSU football, you're oh, not yeah, thinking. You're not, you're, God. Yeah, he, no you, doubt about it. I mean, no, no doubt trust about me, it. No disrespect to Bob Hill. Bob right. Hill did his thing and he laid a foundation. But when you think, yeah. Bob Hill was blowing white JSU. Yeah, W.C. Mm -hmm. Gordon brought that red in. Yeah, he brought when you saw that when you saw yeah. that red block and them red Nikes, you knew it was business. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know what's called kept the, he tried to keep it going on too. Uh uh Big Daddy Carson when he was coaching too. It it was certain the games that we you know watching we play in the red got the red stripe pants. No, 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 no. Red, when, oh, the, when Big Daddy took over, it was a continuation. Nothing changed. Yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing changed, changed until Big Daddy passed. Yeah. But 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 Hoop and DJ, what hey, I'm telling y'all. When I was in school, man, like you talking about head busts. There go one of my boys right here, a football player, big long story. He played on the same team with uh, with, with TC. They were. Hey, I appreciate the honesty, like, though. I appreciate the they, honesty about the, the JSU legacy. So um, <laughs> I'm shutting up. I, I love the discussion because because yeah, people keep it trail about you know what Jack State been through, man, and where where they at now. But yeah, it, uh, one thing we got to keep in mind that, we, like you said about James Bell, but the guy that empowered James Bell and them to destroy that program was Ronald Mason. And see, one of the things you have to understand about black college presidents, either the president's going to make you better or they're going to destroy your program. And the person that helped uh, set the line to destroy Jackson State program was Dr. Ronald Mason. Don't leave him out. Mm, yeah. I'm going to say this too, Doc. I hate y'all stole Ashley from us because uh, Ashley was the, the <laughs> provocateur of Prayer View. Going where we went, it, it is what it is. He was the extension of uh, Charles McClellan. And I, I hate y'all for having Ashley. I, I just want to put that out there. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, man, thank you for giving it to us, though. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, it, I'm, on the real, though, you wouldn't have it, like, for, 
for a Prairie View football, if you want for Ashley Robinson, you would not have Eric Dooley or or Willie Simmons there. Oh, big facts. Oh, I know. Big facts. <laughs> like, so, I, I, go, go ahead, Doc. No, no, no. You go ahead. No, nah, but man, I, I, our AD before him was a cat we brought in from the business department. This dude ain't, I mean, he's a good dude. That dude ain't know nothing about no doggone sports, man. And after Charles left, you know, he stepped in and he, he tried his best. I forget his name. I, I don't know why his name is not uh, coming to my mind. But when Ashley came, it was a huge difference, bro. He was a young guy with young ideas. So when I watched all this stuff come to fruition with y'all, I'm just like, God damn it. <laughs> I remember that was us, dog. <laughs> I remember it was us. Man. Hey, speaking of PV, I got to say this, man. I, I, I'm curious to see how good that run game will be with Caleb Johnson and those returning offensive line. And uh, uh, I'm a fan of good run games. I'm a fan of running backs. And I, I truly want to see what they do because they have the athletes. This whole year, the SWAC is going to be the most competitive, I say, in about in the last 10 years. This is what I think. Nah, you, you correct. You good. You correct on it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of it, talent, man. It's a lot of talent. Like, don't and don't get it wrong, though. Like, even Mississippi Valley is getting talent coming in. Like, Absolutely. uh, with Coach Kendrick Wade coming down, you know, coming yeah. down the road from Delta State. Um, he got talent coming in at that school. At, I don't see them win. I don't think they win probably like eight games, but I will see them improving like five. You know, at least winning like five or six. Or well, six. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of games, but but I think they'll improve. <laughs> I mean, but but it, it, it all depends on it all depends on how they play though. It, well, it Doc, all depends on, Doc, who are the, the six they gonna beat? Who are the six teams they gonna beat? Oh, well, I gotta uh -oh. go back to that schedule. Right. I, did, uh -oh. I, did, I did a show. On tough, it. I did a show. I did, I did a show. On it. Uh, well, I know they're not gonna beat Jack State, so okay. I'll be calling. <laughs> but we'll we'll hey, Zo, tell them we'll pack up that little high school stadium up there. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I tell you what, though, I will, I will say this: this upcoming season will be what people expected in the swag last year is what they're really going to get this upcoming season. I agree with that so much so that I really believe the top three in both divisions are have one in records. That's parody, though, right there. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, say it like this. We got to have soup improvement out of Southern and uh, Grambling. Yeah. Now, I know we're going to have great teams in Jackson, Mississippi. I know Alcorn's going to be good. But the SWAC has to have Southern and Grambling playing with all cylinders clicking. Because last just, year, we didn't I, have that. I disagree. I disagree. I, I, I'm going to go this way, though. I'm a, fam, I'm you, a, fam, fam is going to be a team to look for, man. Willie Simmons oh, without is, is going to do his damn thing. So I, I think we, we, we can't excommunicate fam out the discussion. Oh, Here, okay. Here's the thing. You're going to have you're going to have Jackson State, FAMU, and Alabama State in the East. They're all going to have winning records. But you can't just bypass Alabama and them because the, the problem is we tend to hold on to – what we last saw, and, and then we project that into the next season as if, like, the last thing we saw is going to be a carryover into the next year, and we can't do that. Those three teams in the East are going to be good, but in the West, Alco is going to be good. Believe it or not, Prairie View is going to be good. Oh, Prairie, yeah, View, yeah. Prairie View brings back everything that they have. Yeah. Prairie, View has a, Prairie View has a good coaching staff, but also outside of those two, you can't expect that Southern and Grambler are both are going to be good, and nobody's talking about Texas Southern. If mm. Texas Southern can get a clue on defense, they're going to be a thorn. Oh, they got it. Every Todd is in Houston. Every Todd is in Houston. They're going to play defense. And, and, so, and, and Zoe, and hmm? how many how many uh, former underclassmen Texas Southerners will turn it? 58. They'll be juniors now. So they can only go but up. They have the talent. They have the quarterback. And I think they have the defensive coach to, to surprise some people. I'm trying to tell you, every Todd is in Houston. He's I mean, in third ward. You the can, defense you can, is going to play it at Texas Southern. You can have the coach, but the, the players on the field got to do it. Now, because the this is a, hey, this is a, a, a change maker right here. 
Well, the same, the same thing you're saying right now, we heard the same thing from Alabama AM and and their defensive coordinator too when he came in. No, no. But see, Alabama a and ms program is they have to have a quarterback like a a Keel Glass. No, 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 no. no, no, no. We're not talking about that kind of quarterback. They don't oh, win. We talking about, we they talking about, about, about the Keel Glass. Defense. But we're talking about the defense, not the quarterback. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. a whole different issue. Oh, you talking about Bullwear? Bullwear? Yes. Uh, he was all right. Here you go. Hey, see, I'm see, I'm see. see? Yeah, he's, like, he's, like, he's, he's not player. every card now. He's not every card. But every card has now, won. Now, Mr. Listen, Ford, I'm not every card has been to the uh, celebration bowl twice. But here's won the thing, one Ford, and lost one. Here's the thing. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just highlighting the point. I'm saying we're the same thing that you're saying right now. We were saying the same thing about Alabama and them last year. Remember, they got this great reputation for the coordinator. They got all these transfers coming in. It was like, oh, yeah, they're going to have a good defense. But he hadn't done nothing in the swag. He did that stuff in the CIAA. I, I'm not, again, I'm not disputing you. I'm not <laughs> disputing with you. I'm just highlighting the point. I'm saying that just because you have the coach doesn't guarantee that you're going to, the players got to get it on the field. Absolutely. I'm not, and, and also, but again, even if you're right, you're still highlighting my point. My point is you got, you got uh, Alcorn in the West. You got Southern in the West. Texas Southern is going to be good. And then you got Prairie View. That's oh, 14. Prairie going to be good. Hey, By the way, who's the quick. new defense coordinator, Prairie View? I don't know. Uh, the, the, the last year's defense coordinator, he left and went to Alabama State. Did they name a new defensive coordinator, Prairie View? I think they did, but I don't sure know who did, it is. I don't know who the cat is. Well, uh, uh, let me Was he on quick. the staff or they brought in somebody? Let me add this real quick, Mr. Ford. Um, so one thing that I, I've learned is I listen to people who know football. So I interviewed KJ Black, you know, Prairie View, you know, um, all-world quarterback. Yeah, yeah, I remember KJ. You know, he coaches for the Rams right now in the NFL. Right. And he said about – I asked him about Alabama a He was like, man, when you got all them damn transfers, continuity is going to be an issue. And uh, I think me and DJ was on the stream together. When we interview mm -hmm. uh, KJ, and I and I, I didn't quite take to it. I was like, okay, well, you know, he, he may be a year removed. He, you know, he may be a little rusty with his with his takes. But I be God dog, Coach Maynard couldn't get it done with all them good dog on tran transfers. So it, it's, it's something to be said if you don't have continuity and you bring in guys who have cohesion going forward. So you know that that does give me a little trepidation. You know, going forward with A and M. With all that turnover, so I I want to inject that into the conversations we go forward. Yeah, he was right, and uh, man, we talking about all these teams. The one team we didn't even talk about, All Corn State. Mm. Fred McNair oh, yeah. is mm. recruiting like a motherfucker right now. Yeah, and yeah. that making that brother making look at his film. He could spin. Yeah, yeah, it did. The 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 thing about it too is they returned that hard head. At running back with uh Javion Howard. He's another pro prospect. <laughs> He's hey, another that's, that's a hard he y'all know who he reminds me of. He reminds me of a smaller ironhead Hayward. Like just <clears throat> run through the hole, put his head down, uh one cut, uh got speed. He just don't have that size like Iron Head had when you know playing in the NFL. But like that's who he remind me of. Uh another school we haven't talked about. I mean, I know we talked about it earlier. Like, I know me and, me and Mr. Ford and uh tomorrow we talked about this earlier. Is Bethune Cookman. And I know it's gonna take a minute for them to get themselves, you know, to get themselves um acclimated and stuff like that with coach woody being the head coach for you know being a new head coach but i i say i would say you know keep an eye out on on bethune later down the line i ain't gonna say like now but later down the line i would keep an eye on bethune how, how, how later we talking i'll probably get about it uh two years Okay, yeah. all, right, all right, that's fair. That's fair. I'm about yeah. to say, I thought you talking about late in the year. I'm like, nah, bro. No, 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 no. I get back to you. Right, right. They, you. If they improve, they probably win about at least, they'll win at least three games. All right, I got you. All right, and, I'm rocking that, with that. And, that uh, that's the only improvement I see. Other than yeah. them having a quick, you know, getting a QB. And, and Doc, I just want to apologize to the, some of the Alcorn fans. I made a video about the top three running backs. 
uh-huh. thought, I thought Howard was an upperclassman. But no. with the COVID yeah, yeah. rules and stuff, you can have an extra year. So I, I had the top three, Savion, of course. And then I had, uh, let me remember, remember. It was Savion. Who's the other running back I had on there? I had a oh, uh, the brother that transferred from uh, – I was on the prayer view. Yeah, Caleb Johnson. Caleb, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Caleb yeah. Johnson, and I had a wild card in Floyd Chalk. I think I think Grandma's gonna run oh that rock. He's very talented, and wow. I thought that uh, Howard was an upperclassman and wasn't returning. So my apologies on that. Just one of them. If Howard if Howard runs for twelve or thirteen hundred yards, he's out. He's going pro. I think this is last year anyway. Yeah, he he's out. This is last year, so um, um, Southern, uh, they're trying to look to repeat to be uh, SWAC West champs, mm-hmm. but like you said, Mr. Ford, they did, they it, duly did that team a disservice by not playing <laughs> uh, 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 Bubba McDaniel. You, you know how I feel about that. <laughs> You know how I feel about my Louisiana schools. I'm I'm gonna say this again to y'all. For that swag to be what we wanted to be, them Louisiana schools got to pick it up. Southern got to get better <laughs> and Grambling. That's my school. Grambling got to do better. I agree. And Southern got to do better. I agree. Whole hey. agree with that. Hey, right. I ain't gonna lie, Mr. Ford. Y- y- y'all letting us smack y'all a little too much, man. We'll pray of you in, in the uh in, in, in the, the Dallas classic. Oh, y'all yeah. taking that. Y'all have taken oh my God. See, when I was in school, uh, Eddie owned that. <laughs> yeah, Eddie absolutely. Robinson owned it. Absolutely. Now y'all have taken. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. Dooley <laughs> took it. Dooley took it from us. Dooley nah, took it from us. No, nah, Coach. Coach uh, Henry Fraser started the, the trend. Yeah, yeah. Coach Fraser you right. I'm the sorry. Trend. Yeah, you yeah, right, man. It, I ain't gonna lie, man. There was a game as, as Prairie View Ice. We, we, we knew we we get smacked by y'all. Yeah, now it's like <laughs> we, we, we expect to win that game. Now I ain't gonna lie. That, but that's the only problem I had with PV fans. Because they so they they they're still don't say it don't they, say it they're still thinking like it's it, it's the it's the nineties like Zo you Zo Mister Four y'all could attest to this like look yeah. they they want they did not win a football game from ten years uh, uh, October uh nineteen eighty nine because they beat Mississippi Valley my aunt told me that because she was the cheerleader for for <laughs> right. TV. Oh yeah! All the way up until 1998, when they played Langston. Yep. Well, well hey. Doc, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drop this in your lap. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm a prayer of you out through and through. Everybody know this, right? Yep. I like, I, I, I sugar honey iced tea. You, you use the acronyms for that on mm-hmm. prayer of you fans so much because we are, we are, we're horrible fans. We're horrible fans. Because the whole gripe was, oh, well, we need to get a better field. So we, we got rid of Blackshire Field, which is the middle school field, which you want to right. say. It, it really was. Field. It and really 09, was. Real talk, not high school, middle school field. We won a <laughs> swag championship that year with KJ Black. Shout out to KJ Black again. Right. We got this beautiful stadium now. Beautiful yeah, stadium. And, and Brown act- said it before he took the, the, the Jackson job, man. Y'all got to go on the PV. Y'all look, look it up on the film. It's a beautiful stadium. And we still can't pack it out. Because Do you I play day it, games or night games? Both. Both. It, it don't matter. All, all we look for is is, is the uh, homecoming games. So I be in these alumni circles. I'm not gonna lie. I be ripping my new one, and I, I head of uh, <laughs> alumni affairs, uh, Miss Phyllis Darden. She, she mm-hmm. don't endorse my stuff on the front end, but she inbox me like, "Man, keep stay on them," because the culture is so weak. And, and I, I I'm a prayer of you out through and through. But I, it's funny to watch this, and, and we compare ourselves to Jackson and Southern and Graham. I'm like, we ain't nothing like them. We ain't nothing like them. And so I, that's why I give so much respect for, for Jackson State fans. You know, for, for the most part, like, y'all support y'all school. Southern, y'all support y'all school. Jackson, I'm sorry, uh, Grambling, and then fam, y'all support y'all school. And when I look at Prairie View, we got, we got everything there. We got the, well, the infrastructure, eh, questions right now. But Everything's there as far as the facilities and that, and it's like we don't get it. And so, well, I, let me ask I, you this: I, 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 when when, look, when look, Southern look, look, look. came out there the last time, what was the oh, attendance? They, they, they outperformed us in, in the stadium. Yeah, 
I mean, yeah, what, like what was the was it fifteen thousand, ten thousand? What was the attendance? I don't remember the number, but I remember. Uh, I remember like because I, I streamed that game, and people were saying that there were more Southern fans in the building than Prairie okay. fans. Oh, yeah, yeah, travel. Right. Travel. The, the baseball classic at the Minute Maid Stadium. There were more Southern fans than Prairie View fans. So I mean, hey. The, <laughs> so would it be better if you met Southern in Houston? Hey, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm just would, would, way, man. Would, I mean, like, could, could you see Southern and Prairie View meeting at Rice Stadium? Yeah, I could. Okay, I could. It's, right. it's like we, we don't even deserve home court advantage because we don't even show up. And I'm seeing, you know, because I stream games, I'm seeing uh, undergrads say, "Oh man, I ain't going to the game. Ain't nobody there." I'm like, "What?" So it, it's interesting to see the the, the, the dichotomy of, of teams that show up and travel to ones that don't, i.e., us. So I, I just, you know, I'm not biased, man. I, I really, I sugar honey iced tea on my own school in that capacity. Hey, right. Zoe, you could test, we could test to this for Jackson. We was trash for seven and a half years, and we still showed up to the stadium. Big facts. Still, yes, left the nation in attendance. We man, still show up. Let me, let me say this. 35 years, right? Let me, let me say this. No school in the country has led the uh, country in attendance more than JSU. Yeah, and that's right. 20, I got to say this. 2019, it kind of goes over everybody's head. 2019 was a game changer. The fact that JSU, JSU was 4-8, and eight, mm -hmm. and we averaged 34,000 fans a game, changed the game. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said right. Prairie View Stadium is small. Stop it. Preview Stadium is not small, bro. <laughs> Stop it. The, the stadium, the, they made the stadium that way. So that way, if they wanted to, they can expand it to like 25, 30,000 people. Yes. Yes. They, they, when they made that stadium, they knew what they was doing. Mm -hmm. They knew what they was doing. So, I mean, to me, like, look, Preview, like you said, Preview just got to get out that old way of thinking now. Like, this is go. not the 90s. This is not. Go. This is not the nineties. Like y'all are winning. Y'all had a look. Y'all won the swag in oh mm nine, -hmm. and barely had people going to the game because everybody was still thinking like, "Look, we still losing." Like, no, 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 Doc. Th th that's not true. We we, we were filling up Blackshire Stadium. The problem is we weren't traveling. And we were traveling a little bit that year because, I mean, we were to Southern and, and people was traveling. Problem is we don't compete with the Blue Bloods. And and as, as we go forward now, now it's like it's a new set of excuses. Oh, well, they're not doing a good job of letting them know when the, when, the, when the game is going. Oh, well, because we in Houston, you know, it's a 45-minute drive. I'm like, dog, everybody got an excuse, bro. Like, you got to show up to the games. So I, I'm not trying to hear excuses. So, you know, it's, it's hard being a fan of my own program because I understand how apathetic the fan base is to, to the, the, the point of chat. If, I'm not if, trying to hear that stuff, bro. If people don't understand, this is the three games. Who? DJ, y'all can attest to this. Mm -hmm. I can attest to this, too. Three games that PV going to show up for. <laughs> Labor Day <laughs> Classic. Yep. Yep. Homecoming. Yep. <laughs> and the damn State Fair Classic. There you Those go. All the three games they're supposed to ding, 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 ding. That's the all they're going to show up for. <laughs> especially, the, especially the State Fair Classic because both schools, Rambler and Prairie View, have a strong alumni base in Dallas. Yes. Right. Strong. That's I'm, talking about, mm -hmm. I'm talking about yeah. strong. Yeah. It, I know I'm Jack State through and through. You know, I see people come in, you know, little Jack State tags and stuff, but shit, when I brought, you know, my man work, man, I see the Grambling, the Prairie View, you know, some Texas Southern up in here, like, but y'all, they got a big alumni base up this way. Absolutely. Uh, but those are the only three games that P that PB will only show up for. And, yep. and, and if they play Southern, they not, they'll show up for Southern, but Southern going to show up regardless because yes. Southern travels. That's we, we, why you think they call Prairie View Baton Rouge West? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, though, that, though, Doc? I say this in these alumni circles, and then I get kind of ostracized, but, you know, people can't take my, my credit away because, you know, I got, you know, shout out to Swag Buzz. I got Swag Hours. So you, you can't say I'm talking, you know, being disingenuous. I'm mm -hmm. just being matter of fact. 
because I look at Jackson State's fan base. I look at Southern. I look at Grambling. I look at FAM. I'm like, we ain't nothing like them. So, so y- y- y'all can lie to y'all self all y'all want to, but I- I'm on these YouTube streams talking to you. I'm talking to Swag Buzz. I'm talking to DJ. I'm talking to Tomorrow Leaders uh, Sports. Right, I, I, I'm in. I'm in these spaces. I'm on mm-hmm. Girl in the Swag on Facebook. We ain't nothing like these people. We we got the facilities and, and the success, but as far as fan participation, we ain't nothing like these people. So I'm just gonna keep it real. Hey, hey, I what to do. Yeah, ahead, I though. just want to add, man. I was talking to my Ken folk about this, man, about PV, and we was talking about the facilities. This was like a couple months ago, and I said, man, if the fan engagement, it, it can never be close like Jackson or Grambling or Southern or FAMU because those are the blue bloods. Mm-hmm. But if it could just be just adequate, the recruiting increases. The, mm-hmm. the kids like the facilities. Absolutely. You ask any recruit. They may not even think about going to PV, but they said, man, if they were just the fan supporters, people were just out there, I probably would think about it. These mm-hmm. are what the recruits are saying. So they mm-hmm. got all you need right there at PV. They just got to get that engagement up. And if any PV Absolutely. fan is listening, man, if you show up, all these recruits you see everybody else getting in the HBCUs, you'll get that in then some. Hey, DJ, I'm going to give you another nugget. How about Chad Ochocinco's uh, daughter goes to Prairie View? Oh, yeah. that's another. How about Come Terrell on. Owens' daughter plays volleyball for Prairie View? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. If we ain't maximizing on that on that star level, you know, um, I guess stewardship from from these cats. That's what we got at Prayer View, and nobody knows that. Nobody knows Chad Ojosico's daughter goes there as a regular student, and To's daughter plays for the volleyball team, bro. And how about you got two players on the Falcons roster right now? Yep, Kadarius one thing Kadarius Hard, the other name Quentin Bale, I think. Isn't it? Yeah, the long, the edge rusher, bro. We yeah. are horrible. We are. We got horrible. two players on the Falcons from Prairie View. We're horrible at that next level, and I, I don't care about being ostracized, but calling out was true because I be in these circles, i.e., on Doc Holiday's channel. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the ones I'm just honest, so I'm like, we need to be better, man. And and one thing that KJ said when I was on the stream before DJ, he was like, just be PV. We're not going to be Southern. We're not going to be Jackson. We're not going to be Grammy. Be PV. Like DJ Premier, one of the best DJs that ever lived, is a Prayer View alum, right? <laughs> Premier in there, Prayer View alum. Kurt Cobain, Prayer View alum. And, and a lot of other, you know, you know, mumble rappers in, in that 2005. OG Ron C. <laughs> Come on, bro. Prayer View alum. We focus on the wrong sugar, honey, iced tea. If we just focus our stuff on the right thing, Prairie View could do so much. Well, DJ Mr. Rogers, huge DJ. If we just focus the right stuff on the right things, Prairie View could be so much better, but we don't, and I'm going to call it out, and I hate it. <laughs> well, did you think Ruth Simmons was a part of the problem? I, I think, well, I think a lot of Prairie View alum love Ruth Simmons. Mm-hmm. Um I think that, you know, before her it was, uh, oh, buddy, I forget his name. I'm, I'm so, man, I'm, I'm terrible with, with names of people. And I'm a salesman and I'm horrible with names. But I think the Prairie View alumni, uh, as it were, that they love Ruth. And, you know, she, she left out, obviously. So now they, they uh, Texas a and system has replaced her. So it's, it's not so much Ruth. It's just like the fact that we don't put enough former athletes back into the program because we got them. We mm-hmm. got them. Yep. Got them. It's like, it's, no, we, we, again, the facilities are there. Go to Prairie View. I'll put Prairie View. Um, no, the Baby Dome. <laughs> but, they, they, but you know, they, whatever, whatever. they work on the Baby Dome, though. You know yeah, yeah. No, no, the, the Baby work. Dome got, got like a, a jumbo screen now and they got the, 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 the chairs fixed. But, the, you know, if, if we're really talking about what was to, to be talked about, the stadium is, is where it's at. So yeah. I'll put Prairie View against anybody, not just swag driven, small, you know, D1 level. I'll put it against anybody. But the, the real <laughs> question is, what are we as an actual fan base? And in my opinion, we're garbage. And I hate that, bro. But I own it. Somebody said this time. right here. It said Prairie View reminds 
<laughs> reminds them of uh A and T in some ways. Hey, it is what it is. Engineering oh, school. Both of them are big time engineering schools. Yeah. It is what it is. I think it's time, as far as the as far as the athletics go and trying to get the people to come out. They said uh, not, uh, what is it? A and T said they got the world's greatest homecoming, right? Don't they call it G O or something? What do they call that at uh, North Carolina yeah, G -O? G -O? <laughs> G -O, greatest homecoming. Home yeah. <laughs> hey, Prairie View is nice. I, I don't know if, if y'all know, it's like Black Woodstock. If, if you don't know, it, it, go it, down it the tense, woods. Oh, oh, it go down the woods, bro. It's Black Woodstock. So I would say that, but to me, as a former athlete and a former coach at Prairie View, I don't give a damn about that. Do you show up every Saturday when we got a, a you know a, a, um, a football game? Do you show up on Saturdays for a basketball game? That's what I care about, and we don't do that. So I'm gonna call it out. Oh, I don't care whose stream I'm on. From you know Doc, your shit popping. If I'm mm -hmm. on somebody whose shit ain't popping, I'm gonna say the same thing because it's it's room for improvement on yep. a major scale, and that's just real talk. And by the way, could y'all push for Otis Taylor to go into the Hall of Fame, to the NFL Hall of Fame? I'm with it. I'm with <laughs> it. He should have been in there. Yeah, I'm telling you. So I, I'll say this too, Mr. Ford. So I also do media, and I, I'm with the NFL uh, Alumni Association. I, I'm associated with them. So I, I covered the, the uh, Super Bowl this year out there in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Right. And it's just so funny, man, w what I try to do, I always try to push the HBCU consciousness and the people who I know make these decisions. One, one dude I put in was James Houston. I was telling people about James Houston because I covered the NFL draft last year. Right. And, you know, the, the Lions, you know, drafted James Houston. I was like, I told my constituents, this dude going to be a dude. I told them off rip, this dude going to be a dude. And it just so happens in this last four games, setting NFL records as a rookie. Yeah. And I, I and I sat back and I was like, I told y'all. And everybody, like, damn, you was right. So hey, hold on. It, it, hey Zo. Yeah, go, go, go ahead. Hey Zo, you you still up? <laughs> Gotta make sure. Uh to so, me, I just feel like, what do you think? How if James if, if James Houston would have played early in the season instead of towards the you know, oh, it'd end, be you crazy. know towards the end it'd of the be season. Crazy. Go on, say it. Go on, say it, Doc. It would be crazy if he played the whole year. If he played the whole year, that that eight sacks, that eight sacks would have been double. Come on, yeah, yeah. It would have been crazy if he played the whole year. He if, if he would have eclipsed. It. He would have eclipsed his own teammate who plays on the other side, <laughs> Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson. Who, yeah. who ain't no who ain't no slouch. He a dog too. Both yeah, of them dogs. Hey, Both hey. of them dogs. But Gosh, I'm just you know saying. Crazy. Man, I was, I looked at the Detroit Lions. Like I look at all the NFL free agency. Detroit ha Lions had a, a poster, mm -hmm. and it showed the first round pick of no, the second round pick of last year. What's his name again? The the defense and from Michigan, uh, Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson and another defensive player. No picture with James. He's I like. Come on, man. I mean, this is how much HBCU players had to continue to garner respect. They got to outwork everybody. Uh, Again, if James Houston would have played, we we, we talking about 16 sacks. He probably would have had more than that because he there's some games against weak offensive line, you know, defensive end or edge would be on that zone, and they could have a multi-sack game. That's I ain't going to lie I'm well, not going to lie to you. We, You know, me and you, we Cowboy fans, right? Right. Same here. Who, if we, if he would have played in that oh. game against the Cowboys, and he, he probably would have did Tyler Smith dirty. I, I'm just wait, wait, wait a minute. Tyler Smith would have held all game. Now he's good, but he holds too much. But he would have got he would have got done dirty because yeah, it was just the fact, it's just, it, it, it just the fact just like <laughs> look who he was going up against. He went up against the right tackle and the left tackle uh, for Buffalo in that Thanksgiving game, and and destroyed both of them like. Put one with one hand while getting to the while getting the Josh Josh Allen and trying to bring that big muff down. Come on now, it it, it just certain games like I'm just saying like if he would have played against that Cowboys game, I think he probably had about two sacks. 
Let me let me ask this Maybe. question: Is uh, Bubba McDowell is he one of the top five coaches, or is he in the top ten in the SWAT? Is he is he one of oh, the top, top five, five coaches? For sure. Top five for sure. Okay, so who's in your who's the number one? Number one, right. yeah. Mm. Well, Yo, who's number two? Maybe Eddie, Eddie uh, Robinson definitely. Um, is is Bubba Simmons. three? So Eddie. Bubba, I'm sorry, Eddie, Coach Simmons. So Simmons better than Robinson? A uh, uh, Robinson better than Simmons? Well, I put them hey, one, two. Hey. I put them one, two. So three is, is Bubba. So who's better than Bubba? Well, uh, well, or Fred. You can put Fred in there. Mm. I say you got to put Fred, but I don't, we, but we don't know what TC going to do because it'll be first time. Coming. Yeah, it, it's, it's too early. It's too early. He's actually to excluding TC now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so, get, so give me your top five again now. Exclude TC. Okay. Exclude What's your Eddie, top five? Excluding TC, I'm going uh, Eddie Robin in that in that fold. That's number I'm one. Going, um. Yeah. Why not? I mean, you know, you know, uh, Anton Sewell is my guy, and he speaks highly of Eddie Rob. So I'm gonna get Eddie Rob that. So then we go uh, Bubba. Then we go Fred. McNair, that's uh -huh. three. Four. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm going to give uh, Simmons over Bubba. Then Bubba, four. Uh -huh. So five is, five is up, up, for, up for grasp. So we, we, we can put TC in there. Okay. So TC top uh, five. If, okay. if we go, yeah. TC top five. All right, this is what I'm going to get. You know, number one, um, Cause I'm just going based off the previous year. It's gonna be Willie. Willie, okay. Yeah. So number one is Willie. Mm -hmm. Uh, number two. Uh, I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give the 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 draw to uh, I'm gonna give the draw to um, Eddie. Number three, I have Bubble. Number four, I have Fred. And number five, I will give it to. Um, hmm, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I give it to Dooley. Yeah. Uh, Lord, yeah. you give it to Dooley? Hey, man, give this it is to the most underachieving coach in the squad. <laughs> I, hey, I'll just say I'm going by last season. I'll just go about the last season. He's, he was 20 and 17 at Prairie View. That's underachieving. He was the two slack champs in a row. Come on now. Hey, we got we got 20 and 17 was on the board. He was two slack champs in a row, man. Come on now. I mean, I mean, who else I'm gonna put up there? I mean, two I put Fred, I put I put Fred at least at three. I have to put Fred. Hey, up like the blue blood said, we gotta put. I mean, Fred. You said yeah, Fred got to put Fred in number one. <laughs> yeah, he he's won a championship. No, I mean, he's been to Fred. Up here. What's up, Fred? Twice, what's right? What's going on, man? How y'all fellas doing? What's up, what's up, G? Uh, what's right, up, right. man? What's up with them Texas Southern Tigers, the oh, third world boy? Texas Southern Tigers. We are in the building. How y'all fellas doing again? Uh, I'm just not making it to my little destination over here, at U of H. Okay. Uh, no let's talk about let's talk Tiger football, Texas Southern football. Um, once again, like my man from Raw Raw earlier stated, uh, we do have quite a few returners. We're looking at around 58, 58 returners, which they've been together for quite a while now, two, three years, We're going on three years together. We expecting we expecting big things out of these young men, man. They gelling. This could be the time to be gelling at the right time. Uh, uh, to make a little run so that we can do what we got to do to turn some heads. Um, everybody's looking what, what we're supposed to be. Owens is doing his thing. Howard, Howard then shed them up a good 15, 20 pounds. So you got you got your big back going to be having a little bit more speed on him. Um, Rob receivers, Rob receivers, we got the same returners returning and uh, – I think they're getting it a little bit better, man. It to me, it was just a, a a young receiving crew trying to find themselves, trying to figure out how how to work this system, and I think uh now they're starting to catch on. The main question: 
Come on, QB one. QB one. QB one. Mr. Andrew Body is doing yes, well. Yeah, he, he's, he's doing got a quarterback well, one. He, Absolutely. He's, do, he's doing well, fellas. He's he's doing well. Uh, um, we not we not all the way. We 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 in the process of the, of the <laughs> rehabbing. And, uh, what I, about I, that I, kid, Quay Davis? How's Quay yeah, Davis? Yeah, yeah. Quay yeah, Davis too. Man, that's my guy. You know, Quay, you man. know what, fellas? I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I have yet. I mean, I've been to all the practices. I have yet to see the young man. Oh, okay. I haven't okay. met so Quay, him yet. I haven't met him yet. I've been looking forward to meeting him. You know, so as soon as I get a chance to meet him, I shall tell y'all what I see, what I think about the young man. But as far as that, I haven't seen him yet. We got quite a few athletes that, um, you know, I guess they're waiting to graduate and to, to come over. So that I haven't seen those those caliber. I seen a couple of the young younger generation that's coming in. They looking nice and promising. Man, uh, all the way across the board, man, it's gonna be tight again for the West. Well, okay, well, let's ask this: Are they gonna beat Prairie View the first game? Shit, no. <laughs> 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 hey, as a as a as a tiger, of course we want to beat we want to beat top dog. I'm, but I'm a respect. I'm once again I gotta give respect because PV is the top dog. You know, uh, the goal mm. is to beat PV. That is that's on my book, you know that. It, but you're not picking them right now. <laughs> you're not picking, not picking them right now. I'm, I'm gonna pick TSU off the rip if that's what okay. You're asking so you are picking them to beat Prairie View. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna pick. I'm oh, picking Texas Southern right. to beat Prairie View. Oh, but, but but Craig, you can test me and test and, and who if if it you did throw the three in when well, I three interceptions. To start the game out, everybody started the game out slow that day because right. it rained. It right. was a, what, yeah. a, almost a two hour delay. Right. Uh, because the game post started at six. Mm -hmm. It didn't start to yeah, like I was, almost I was eight. Real soggy. Yeah, I was soggy. Yeah, I know. And, yeah, that was a, that was a different. Well, you know what, man? I'm gonna tell y'all something. And and um, and it's just being me. Ever since Andrew Body has became into TSU's uh foundation, we are getting better every year. We won two, three games the first year. We right. won five, six games this year. I mean, if we're getting better every year, it's just the small things. You know, you know, the younger generation, they don't believe in it's all about the muscle and the bustle. You know, me, I'm a little older. I like to finesse and take my time and use the smaller things to help us out. So it's just the smaller tweaks, man, gentlemen, that I think that we need, you know, uh, uh, the corrosive group of the offensive line coming together as a whole, you know, without people getting hurt. One week you got one starting lineman in, the next week he hurt. Like, you know, with linemen, if one or two get hurt, the whole line is off, you know. Right. It's, well, let know, me ask you, do you, want, do you want to continue to play at that soccer stadium or do you want to go to campus at Durham? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Mr. Ford, now, uh -huh. as, as a Houstonian, I, I mean, I'm from Third Ward. I was born in right. Third Ward. You know, so to, to me, and it's just me because I have seen it. I mean, they have plans to fix the stadium. Now, I don't know if that's going to be our tenure or whatnot, but as far as I'm concerned right now, they got us playing at the Shell's. The Shell Stadium now. It's not the PNC, it's the Shell Stadium. Not the Stadium. PNC, right. <laughs> <laughs> but would you rather be on campus? I would rather be on campus, man. Oh, uh, man, no, you a lot of, a lot man, of people, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, real. Just, hey, if you if you in the home, like at home coming environment, when they add the extra, see if, if they just added, you know, added on, man, extended it out. And, and the stadium don't have to wow. be big. I know, I know it's the big thing with, with everybody, like, uh, uh, oh, we got 30,000 in the stands. We got, we can't we help got that, I know that's a big thing, right? <laughs> but it, it, to me, it's it just me. If you get you something like a seven to 10,000 states, uh, C stadium and, and do what you do with that, man. Cause see, one thing I can't tell y'all, cause I'm from the big city, but I got small city mind frame because my family is from the country as well. Uh, uh, with that being said, there is no excuse, but in the city, man, everybody, it's so much stuff to do. That is you true. Well, let me ask this question right here. 
how, how, what kind of support are y'all getting from your president for athletics? Now y'all got a lady president, right? We have a lady president. And she loves and, Texas and, Southern football. And, 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 and you know what, Mr. Floyd? I know a uh -huh. lot of time, a lot of stuff that's been going on for so long. When you get there, you see the problem and you want to be fixed right then and there. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of, right. and that's just not just TSU. That's all the way across the board. There's always going to be something that we don't like. You know what I'm saying? But right. as far as like what I'm seeing, like slowly but surely stuff or things are getting better for the program. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. like, it, like, like them, they don't really have a certified weight room. But what we, they broke ground for one, like last okay. month, you know what I'm saying? And so right, this right. little stuff to help the program, it's coming along, you know what I'm saying? Uh, right. Try to reach I, I, out. I, I, I'm going to add this real quick. Yeah. I, I, if I may. Listen, man, I'm a Houston dude. Right. Through and through. I'm from right. Acres Home, Acres Home, Northside. Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the, 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 the home. Yeah. where I'm from. Say right? less. Say less. Yeah. Houston is an incurable problem. With right. sports, right. it's incurable. Yeah, because I remember my, my pops as a kid. He take me to U of H games. It just it was trash. The coach yeah. was trash as right. a kid. I'm 39 right. years old right now. Right? Okay. It's incurable, and and I, I hate to say this because it's, it's it's very you know deleterious to like what what TSU wants to be. Right. Man, one of my youngest man, John Walker the third, won okay. three championships with Texas Southern. Man, and he came out. To, I live in LA now. Mm -hmm. LA, I interviewed him. I put a, a video out last week. It's just like he even said it, bro. It's just a, a, a culture you can't fix. Right. 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 You just can't what fix you it. Saying the city is too big. Or what is what's the problem? No, no, well, yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I got Mr. you. Ford, you have so much, not to cut y'all off, but like just like the gentleman was just saying, like, you can go to a U of H game and U of H, you know, where you would think is the top school. Yeah. It, it's not Ain't that. nobody there. You know what I'm saying? You can go to a rice gang that's right next Nobody to there. you. Nobody there. Nobody <laughs> there. You can you can go to you know outside of Astros. Yeah, yeah. You go to a Rockets game. Nobody really there. Nobody you know, the Rockets game, really fam. Rockets game. You got to really love it, man. Like, like, you, got to really love it, man. You like know, you, you, that's just if what you it really is. think, hey, but Craig, if you really think about it, you got so all the schools in, in, in Houston in the city limits, right? Right. So you got U of H. Mm -hmm. And you got Texas Southern shit. They all they both cross the street trying each other. Right. You got Houston, well, it was Houston Baptist, but they now call it Houston Christian over in mm -hmm. Sharpstown. That is true, which is about 15 miles away. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you got Rice University, which is over there by the medical district. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, which is about uh, 10 minutes away. <laughs> mm hmm And then, but then like you go, like you said, you go out 45 miles, you got PV. Mm -hmm. You go up another you go up, Mr. Ford, you go up another, let's say, an hour. Yeah. You got Sam Houston. Right. You go up another two hours. Mm -hmm. You got Stephen F. Austin. You mm -hmm. go an hour to the east. You got Lamar. So mm -hmm. you got, like, Mr. Ford, you have probably, together. Yeah, 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 you got probably, like, and you got Texas A&M, which mm -hmm. is another 15 minutes from Prairie View. Mm -hmm. so, so you got, like, eight schools with the probably like a three hour span. Mm -hmm. So let me say this. So Dallas is a better sports town than Houston. Yes. 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 So yeah. Ford, yes. Gotta, yes. Somehow, somehow, somehow. Yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on. I'm going to say this. Somehow, as, a, as, a proud, as a proud, true Houston guy, I lived in Dallas for four years of my life. Yeah. Two years in Juco. I live in uh, Oak Cliff. Okay. And then two years in my, in my mid 30s, I live in Highland Park, which is nice area of Dallas. Right, mm -hmm. Come on, now. Dallas by far is a better <laughs> sports city than Houston. It's not even close. Yeah. It's not even close. And I hate to admit yeah. it because I'm a yeah. Houston dude through and through. Right. It's a better sports city. It just is. Yeah. The Cowboys Look, support. The Mavericks I'm, support. It I'm, I'm from Oak Cliff. Look, I'm from Oak Cliff, right? All right. Oak Cliff, born and raised. All right. When it comes down, it Mr. Ford it even come down to the to the little small things like a high school. Like, like you said, you got Cowboys. We, we, we you know, we going to ride for the Cowboys. The mm -hmm. Mavericks, uh, even when we was trash, we still going to ride for the Mavericks. Stars, as far as the hockey team, we going to ride for them. Rangers, I'm not even a Rangers fan, but them fools still go out there and uh, they support the Rangers. Uh, 
FC Dallas soccer team, they support that too. But like when they get there to the nitty gritty, as far as those colleges and those high schools, UNT, which is 30 minutes away, 30, 20 minutes from, like 20 minutes from my house right now. Yep. And then you got TCU in Fort Worth. Fort Worth. You got SMU in Dallas. Mm-hmm. You got uh don't forget all the little smaller schools. You got Texas, Texas Wesleyan, who mm-hmm. you know they brought their football program back like ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you have is it Fort Worth. Uh, is in Fort Worth. So you got UT Arlington. They don't even have football. They got bas- You know they got basketball. Commerce, and then Commerce, which is an hour away. Yep. Uh, and then like Paul it, Quinn. It just, Paul Quinn, right there in the heart of Dallas, in in mm-hmm. in, in Holly Hills. And then, like I said, when you got the football, where you got high school, inner city high school football is pretty much um, what we look for. And then when when that's all over and done, because the last two years, we already know who's going to win state. That's uh, South Oak Cliff. (laughs) (laughs) Or Duncanville. (laughs) Or Duncanville. (laughs) Or even DeSoto, because DeSoto won this, this, this past year. Yep. Then when it comes to basketball, yeah. oh, everybody, everybody in the city is up for the basketball. Hey, hey dog. Let man. me let me ask this question. Let me ask this question. What can Dr. Charles McClellan do to help Texas Southern? Um, nothing. Nothing. Because uh, well, I say that because U of H has the same struggle. They, they, they sponsored by Jordan. They got the High Fines Pavilion revamp. Uh, it's still uh-huh. the same apathy. It's the same apathy because Houston fans, in my opinion, are horrible sports fans. So what, what they have to do is some uh, extra stuff. Oh, oh, oh go, go ahead, challenge it. Uh, and what? I, I beg to differ on that. Hold on. Uh-huh. What you got to say, DJ? What you about to say something, DJ? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, man, it, it, it needs to be better for the fan support. Let me give you an example. JT Daniels has a lot of talent, right? He, so transferred, he transferred to Rice. I'm sure right. Rice is going to win more games with a because they actually have a quarterback than a lot of teams in that uh, Conference USA. I don't know if they're going to be in the American the next year or what, but I know they're going to win more games than not. I, 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 I could just imagine that the fan support won't be as strong. And this is a quarterback. They, they have never had a quarterback this talented in years. And who is this? Rice. They got JT oh. Daniels. JT Daniels. They've never had a quarterback since Tommy Kramer, right? Wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 but Rice has never had a quarterback this talented in a long time. I'm not that well that talented, but the last quarterback that they had that was good, Dreyfus Jackson, he came from Cedar Hill. He yeah, was I he mean, was that dog. He was a dog. He was, he was good, but he was good. But JT Daniels, I'm talking about pedigree and talent. He's better. Mm. Just all raw talent, uh, just pedigree and talent. He's better. Mm. So JT Daniels will get drafted next year. Uh, if he come if out he with can a, stay a, healthy. With the talent he has, late rounds, just because okay. of their ability. They're not gonna you know how the NFL is. If you if you can't stay healthy, they'll they'll nick it off the uh But remember, separate. that's all nullified by the fact that he's a white man. Yeah, that's his <laughs> yeah. Listen, man. It's called white skin privileges. Listen, yes. the, the, the chat is keeping it real. The, the, the chat keeping it real. If y'all not watching, the chat's keeping it real. Listen, bro. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> the culture proceeds over everything. Texas yeah, A&M is yeah. a college station, which is an hour and some change out of Houston. And That's they all feel, they got. And they yeah. fill that bad boy up. That's Prairie all they got, though. Not. Well, Prairie View, Texas, that's all we got to there. And we don't fill the stadium right. up because the, the, the mentality ain't right. So, well, can, I, can I ask you this, though, bro? Ahead, with with the PV situation, I understand, understand, because, because you know, I'm, I'm real good friends with, with the quarterback, Mr. Connolly. That's, that's my dog, so. Yeah, I, I, I respect, I, yeah, I respect that old PV. Oh, uh, my thing is this though, like, cause I got younger kids. My son, twenty some years old. 
they being in college life, my daughter teenage man, these youngsters, bro, they don't they don't believe in tradition like how we oh, like how we were brought up. They really don't care about what was going on in the nineties, what's going on in the two thousands. We gotta just figure out a way to 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 grab the youth. Mm-hmm. We we uh, as as a whole, I think we kind of outdated with the youth because the youth don't really know nothing. Man, it's people, it's it's players. You were good players. These students see them every day. They don't even know who they are. It's like it's just to me. It's like we got to do something to 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 put something on these youngsters' eyes to make them want to come out, man. Uh, All right. uh, being at PV, being at PV. Uh, they not going to be at PV because they probably did took that ride 45 minutes to go to Galleria down the street. You know, they don't, right, fam, I, nobody, I got you. you know what I'm saying? This is fam, real, I, like, I, I got you. I got you, though. All right, so, so check it. That's never been the case forever. So yeah. you can't say it's just a now thing. It's been a forever thing with Prairie View. So mm-hmm. the problem yeah, is yeah, the body yeah, ain't there. there. <laughs> so it, it, ain't the, it ain't the era it ain't the yeah. the the, the uh, new wave of kids. Yeah, it's never been established. Yeah, because if we look at programs like Alabama, we look at programs like Arkansas, bro, they keep adjusting to like you know. And we talking about some backwoods. We yeah. talking about uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, right. yeah. and freaking uh, wherever the, the hell Alabama is, some bullshit ass place in Alabama, right? I'm <laughs> sorry, uh, Arkansas. Arkansas. I you I understand what you're saying, but when you look at the fan base, is it just the older crowd? Or is it no, 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 no. It's because it's never been established. Okay. And so if you keep passing the buck, as it were, you keep mm. passing the blame, you never mm. establish shit. Yeah. And so, so what, you know, my, my coach, so, so hold, like, hold on one second, hold on one second. What is it? What is it that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. What can we do? To fix that, I'm, I'm when, when? when? So, so, no, no, it's not even that. You you understand that your duty is to put your ass in that goddamn seat on yeah. Saturday, on Wednesday, mm-hmm. on Monday. Mm-hmm. You put your booty in that seat, and the rest to take care of itself. Because my coach, he he went, he went viral this week because you know uh, Arkansas doing their thing. Daryl Hawkins, he was my coach my junior year preview. When he came to Prairie View, dog, I saw his frustration. Now, I was 21 years old, so I didn't fully understand it. Mm-hmm. He was, because he, he, he's from Walla, Texas, which is right, you know, outside of Prairie View. You know, he was a five star kid. He went to, he went, he played under um, uh, Nolan Richardson. As, and Nolan came and ran, uh, you know, a field by practice and went out and played at Prairie View. But yeah. I say, I'll just say this the buy in is the key. So he, he he was so frustrated because Prairie View fans wouldn't buy in like he saw in Fayetteville when they would come and support Arkansas no matter what. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. so when I, I saw Hawk talk to these players because Arkansas are doing their thing in the tournament, and I saw the passion. I'm like, that's what I saw every day from the dude. Now, he, he was a horrible coach, but the passion was not lacking. So, what I see his frustration was in our fan base, the passion not there. Because all the excuses are there. Like, oh, well, I got this going. I got that going. No, 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 no. F that. You Could supposed to have you, your do you narrow... Think, do you think, do you no, think yeah. wins? Do you think wins? No. No, we'll because Prairie View, we, we won, bro. Prairie View won. When Coach Byron took over the basketball program, we were constantly winning. When yeah. Coach Frazier came in the football program, we were constantly winning. Putting niggas in the NFL, right? Yeah. But, but but everybody wants to come to homecoming. Yeah. That's the culture at Prairie View. Right. So the coach is weak. Right. Yeah, until the culture breaks that cycle, you're going to get the same results year after year after year after year. And we're going to be envying uh, Southern, Jackson, Grambling, yeah. fam. And it's, yeah. it's not going to change. Well, and like, I, I'm, I'm off, I'm in, off that in, shit, in bro. Defense, I'm going to say this, like, because... You know, like like what you're saying, it's the Labor Day Classic. We finna play PV, and uh, that's always gonna be a packed, a packed house. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I feel, and, and to me, I feel like it could be more. We don't advertise it enough. It's, no, it it's ain't not, that, it's, bro. Yeah, we you know it's every year. You but listen, every year, year, bro. Should, shouldn't that game be an NRG? But, shouldn't I mean, that Labor Day Classic be an NRG? 
No, because we're not going to fill it up. We know you don't need to fill it up. Can, can you get 35000 in there? Mr. Ford, I grew up knowing that I would never go to Prayer View, which I, I don't go to Prayer View. Spoiler alert. <laughs> But I knew every day the Labor Day Classic every year. I knew it was going down. Yeah. And I went, but I had no connection to Prairie View. I said I would never go to HBCU as a kid, yeah. coming from a uh, you know, going to black college. I'm sorry, uh, a black school in a uh, high school. I went to Eisenhower High School, which is in the hood, right? I never had no connection to it because the alumni don't bridge the gap. Uh, once again, let me ask this question. If you bring Prairie View and uh, Texas Southern to NRG, you can't get 35000 No. I'm going to say, no. say like this, Mr. No. Ford. I'm going to say like this, Mr. Ford. And who you can, me, me and you, we can talk about this all the time. Yeah. The year that they switched over, we was at, you know, Stephen F. Austin. They switched over the game, the the, the Battle of the Piney Woods, mm. right? And they used to be. It used to be on each other's campuses. It was the NRG. I mean, and yeah. then it went to it went to NRG. Yeah, you're not gonna get no packed crowd. You probably get about at least absolutely 40, not people up there. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. How many? How many? How many? 40. They'll get like 35, 40. But that's a good crowd for a college game. for right. yeah, I mean. A good, I feel like that's feel a good like crowd. If we could get that Labor Day Classic in the mid season. If we could change the date of that. Like if we can move in it well, well, you want it at the end of the season or the middle? It don't matter. The apathy is the problem. You're apathetic to the to the shit. It doesn't matter. You can have that motherfucker on January 32nd. They they don't exist. But if you don't want to show up, bruh, it doesn't matter. I've been since my whole life. I'm 40 years old. I well, I'm about to be 40. I've been since my whole life. But here's but here's the thing though. Here's the thing though, who this is what IP, I, I just put it up here on the screen. IP said like this, parents don't instill it into their kids. And that is the truth. There you go. Like, back, so, because, you know, Mr. Ford back then, you know, in the in the 80s, in, in the late 80s and the 90s, our parents instilled in us like, look, you're not saying you're going to go to a, to a black, you know, the HBCU, but you need to know what, <laughs> a, you know, what HBCUs are Absolutely. What their missions are, what they about. <laughs> you need to attend at least like a game, or and you need to go visit the school. Like my uncle, my aunt, like I said, my aunt was Prairie View through and through. She wanted me to go down to Prairie View. She wanted me to be in the March, March of Storm because I was band head. I told her I don't think I could be able for y'all to come down to my to my school in three hours. That's the reason why I went to Jackson. But mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> but but. It was in my family, like I I, I can you run down to my family. My family. Okay. So I went to Jackson. Uh I had two cousins went to Grambling. One of my cousins, uh, she has the uh uh UNCF here in Dallas. Uh my other cousin that went to Grambling, she went there in uh 06. She was the first female tuba player. <laughs> in the band. Uh that I had a cousin that went to FAMU. Uh she's a teacher. I had another cousin went to Alcorn. He played football. Damian Ford was starting quarterback. He was yeah. Donald Driver's quarterback. Yeah. yeah, I remember him. Yeah. Uh, and so like I said, I got a cousin at Howard. Like at Howard. Like we are like my family is entrenched. I got a niece that's getting ready to go to Prairie View in the fall. Congratulations. And then yeah. I got another niece that says she wants to go to Jackson. I said, I don't care. I'll make that three-hour drive to Prairie View, and I'll make that six-hour drive to Jackson like I always do. Right. So will, will Prairie View win the West this year in football? I, I no, think sir. we do. I think we do. No, sir. <laughs> I think no. we do. No, Because we, 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 we almost won it last year. When there no. was no expectation of such, and we got a, a running back, which we Bubba McDowell has shown, he favors the run game. Yeah, we got a premium do. running running back, so I, I don't see how we don't. Hey, Mr. Ford. Yes, Mr. Ford, Texas uh-huh. Southern will be your your swag wish for 2023. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I like the fact that y'all got every time. It's gonna come down tight too. It's gonna. I mean, it's gonna be something like last year. It's gonna come down tight. I'm telling y'all. 
Because everybody but, on the West almost playing almost at the same level. I ain't seen nobody ready to just break off on the West yet. But it, you gotta y'all. realize too, but but look at <laughs> but look at it like this. We, we 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 me and Mr. Ford had already talked about this. You had it was three teams that was in the running, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, Texas Southern, Prairie View, Southern. All corn yeah. eliminated itself because they lost to Jackson at the end of the year. Right. Um, Alabama uh, and got Texas Southern. Alabama and got Texas Southern, and if Ooh, and if Andrew okay. Body did not get hurt. If he did we not get hurt in that it. game, you win in the cup, you win in the division right there. We we and, guess what, got, Doc, and guess what, Doc? The year before that, we only won three games. You only won let's, three games. Let's just think about that. You went That's from winning three games to you That's almost get to the swag championship. Or oh, it shows y'all volatile. It shows y'all up and, and down. Then and then prayer you could have backdoored itself into the into yes. the conference. He he lost the the game, and lost you lost the valley for the second year in a row. Lord have mercy. At the end of the year, and then Southern just okay. Look, you just that's crazy. I hate to say it. Some listen, teams, when, some when, teams uh, got number. listen when when Prairie View met up with uh, Deion Sanders that year for the uh, swag right, championship. Did Prairie View bring a lot of fans? Hell no. Nah. We, we, we don't we, we don't bring fans nowhere. Nah, you got nah. When that watching that game, y'all had a, y'all had. Some fans in there. Uh, a decent amount, man. man. It was a Pretty decent amount. It out. ain't saying it was a lot, but it was a decent yeah. amount that was there. But, that was at that championship game. That was at the championship hey, man, game. Man, Prairie fans don't travel, man. Let's just call up a bean <laughs> what it is, bro. I'll I be on my frat brothers about that stuff. I'll be on, bro. I, I swear to God, I'm I'm scorched earth with Prairie View and our Prairie View isms, and I, I don't like it. So go ahead. When y'all when y'all would play uh, Southern. Over in Baton Rouge, especially for that homecoming, did the Prairie View people come? Now we, we will travel to Baton Rouge. Now we will they, go to they, Baton Rouge. They won't. They won't go past. They won't. Miss <laughs> yeah. four, they won't go past six hours. They won't travel past six hours. No, four hours. It's about a four hours. Four hour drive. <laughs> drive. They yeah. they got lucky just to go six hours just to get the uh, Jackson for that championship game. Facts. Right. Oh so, man. But somebody we asked me with frat uh, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Man, I've been in since uh, spring of '08. So somebody man, they ride chat. to yeah. Daytona. They ride to Daytona. Gonna be something serious. Who? Fly. Yeah, they play. They, I yeah, think, they go. I, I hope. I hope we do fly, but you know we got to go to Ohio too. We talking about? You talking well, about let me Southern. ask you. How about fam? You's coming to Texas Southern? Are the people gonna come out and see fam? Oh, know. of course, of course, Mister 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 Ford. I I gotta put my eyes on the fam. You. R.I.P. Yeah. to Mister Kofi, man. Good dude. Yeah. I gotta. Oh, put yeah. My, I gotta put yeah. my dude, my eyes on that fam. I want to see what it is. I hope, I, so I hope y'all get a chance to see the hundred. Hopefully the yeah, hundred will come out. That. Yeah, I want to see that. I want to. I mean, I, I love. I love. I'm not saying that I. I love. I mean, outside of Texas Southern, man, I. I love the culture. I love the sport. I'm a fan of the animal. I'm not a fan of the name. I like them all. I want to see all the kids succeed, and I want all of them to have a great, happy life. Because when it's all said and done, all these young men, they are our future. So right. yeah, I love I love to see them pre- to prevail through the good through the bad. Oh, uh, I just want to see a great season, man. You know, uh, last year last year was cool. You know, it was cool. It had the ups and downs, especially on the west. It was like when we got toward the end of the, the end of the season, we was like, damn, we can't lose, we can't lose. Who gonna lose? Like it was tight, 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 tight. But hey, man, this gonna be something to see. I just love seeing these young men who were coming from high school and they growing into their they shell, man. They becoming men. It's it's a beautiful thing to watch these men growing up into each other, man. Uh, we oh, gonna yeah. fix that problem with the crowd somehow. I mean, right. I always thought to me, I'm thinking if Texas Southern can just get to winning, because we have been on the on the bad end of the stick for a long time. So I can't speak for PV, but I'm thinking some wins, steady wins, staying constant. Yeah. I think that'll start packing something. That'll start making some eyes. I mean, because they're starting to get a little buzz right now. It's starting to get a – it's eyes looking at them. Like I said, you know, people Bam. is looking. Listen, y'all you playing fam you at want. night? Are you playing fam you at night? Are you playing I, during if the I'm day? If I'm not mistaken, that should be an evening game. I think so, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Okay. Ford. 
Okay. Good. So yeah, good. My, my my thing is, I just want to see what I just want to see some good football. Oh uh, yeah, Craig, I'll be down there. Yeah, we got Patu for Labor Day classic. You got fam for what? We got Platoon Cookman for their homecoming. This is gonna be and Prayer nice. View's playing fam you for their homecoming. Yeah. <laughs> so this gonna be a nice this is gonna be a nice season coming up, man. Oh we yeah, without a doubt. We're in the midst yeah. of a black college renaissance. Yeah, it's what's gonna be a great on? season. Hey, what's going on with with, with Southern's quarterback? Uh, who they got? They got five heard of them. They got five, don't they? they got, yeah, they got a, they got a they got a slew of quarterbacks. They That's got a slew great. of them. I gotta talk to J Max on that one right there. Okay. I could have brought him on on the panel too. Did anybody heard anything about Grammys? Uh, they, they got that, they, they got his number quarterback battling too. Mm -hmm. Uh but it looked like the leader might be Miles Crawley. But uh Oh for real? It, it it might be Miles Crawley taking the you know, taking the reins, but I think they only had like two a couple of practices. So, I liked him Miles Crawley. Uh but just right. looking at it, man, um I'm be I'm I'm gonna try to get down there for Labor Day Classic this year because I I couldn't get down there last year, uh because it was started raining and 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 shh, the missus didn't Mr. want Ford. to get down there. <laughs> yes, Mr. Ford, your, uh, your quarterback. I mean the the DC that comes he comes from Grambling. He out DC. Oh, he's now. awesome. He's awesome. Hey, I like I like from what I've seen for the first the first couple of practices. I like what I see. Oh, he's a good oh, man. Every like, time is like, a big time. I, like, I just just from what I'm seeing right now, I like what I see. Oh, he's a good man. Got a question for you, Craig. It said Derek Morton. He's still at T uh, Texas Southern. Who was one? Derek Morton. Derek. Derek Morton. Morton. Receiver. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. I'm trying to think. He is should be. Still at this, uh, yeah, okay. He should be. Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, we got, we had a couple people, you know, like I said, returning, returning. Then we got some young studs. We got some young studs coming, man. Like uh, I seen a running back from, from Summer Creek that we got coming in. And if it's, if it's the type of caliber dude who ran track because, my homeboy, he he they track coach and they've been winning state three years in a row. So that that running back, he should have him some feet on him. Oh, this, hey, hey, well, coach, let me ask, let me ask this question. You remember Johnny Cole when he was at Texas Southern? Yes, sir. I remember Johnny. Okay, yes, why did sir. he wing it? Why did he wing it? Mr. Johnny Cole. And I yeah. I like I like I like uh oh. Losing them. Been this this 2010, hey. 2010, 2009. We they was taking care of business. I think it was just the way it was. It, it's the way of things, you know. That he was coaching. The way he's coaching is different. And uh, outside of the legal battles, I don't know what was else was going on, but he just his his style of coaching is different. Hey man, his style style of coaching is. Different. Now, I know he it's brought in a lot of transfers. I, right. Yeah, I know he brought in a lot of transfers to Texas Southern. Yeah, he did. But they and, got competitive as soon few, as he came there. A few of a few of the people. I mean, from what I was told, some of the players weren't eligible. I don't know what that was yeah. all about. But, yeah, he had some problems. He did. Know, he had but, some problems. But as far as like with that winning culture, yeah, he he did that. And 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 I and I'm backing. I'm backing. Our. Uh, head coach all the way. This this time, uh, uh, I see I see us coming over the hump. Like like for instance, last year we we won five games. But honest to God, truth, like Alabama, Alabama State, we lost by three points. Like that should have been a win. We lost okay. to Alabama A and M. That should have been a win. Like easily by a few points, we looking at a whole different scenario. Eight and eight and three, you know, stuff like that, man. It's just the little small mistakes that these youngsters got to clean up. You know, let me ask you this question then. Is <laughs> McKinney though, top bro. five? Is McKinney is he, top five? In McKinney. the coaching rank. Is, and, and he, is he top what? five? It, it, okay, dealing with because I'm here all the time and dealing with what he got going against, what he got going against himself. Uh -huh. And and to me, like I said, ever since we have came into this tenure, 
we we're getting better. We're getting better. And it's it's not an easy job. It's not easy. I, I sit there and I look at what they got going on against themselves. And I can point out a, a hundred different things that could be, man, that need to be happening. That'll make the job smoother. But he don't well, let me it. Let me ask this now. With McKinney, is he top five? Is he top 10? Or is he number 12? I'm going to go with, I'm going I'm to be an honest opinion. I give him top five. I'm gonna mm. give, I'm is he gonna is he the best? Five. Is he is he number one? We not here yet, but we can be. Number is he one. number but two? I'm gonna give him top five for sure. I'll is he number two? Sure. We are gonna go with two. Two. Okay. Who, who's your top? Who's your top coach in the squad? And and just just being me from from what I see right now in the West, I'm gonna give it to Mr. Bubba McDowell. Okay. All right. Mm. Mr. Bubba okay. McDowell comes straight in and, and he took the reins to something. It could, and you know, normally things like that, you know, you see them, they come, it ain't going to be, they not winning, but he, he took the reins, man, and, and ran with it. You know what I'm saying? He beating coaches that's been doing this for a long time and he come right in there and winning. So for me yeah. right now, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Bubba is, it was, was it for me. Right. Plus I'm an oil fan, my fault. Don't, I'm a little yeah. biased, but <laughs> like I'm an Earl Campbell fan myself. You know what I'm saying? There you like, go. There you like go. I'm, I'm Earl Campbell fan. Through and through, man. I, I cut for him. He, he, he got it going on. Uh, I, I really just wanted to, to me, we talk about, we trying to get Texas back like it really should be. Like, I want to see PV and Texas Southern get back and get to where it's supposed to be. So, I, I got to you know, with the schedule that Texas Southern made, for, for this coming season, uh -huh. you say you got to go to Ohio, so that you yeah. got to play. What's that? Toledo, Toledo, or Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, Toledo. Okay. Um, there are no slouches uh, from that from that MAC conference. No, That's there's true. not. The Rockets. Uh, yeah, and then you play. Don't you play Rice this year again? Yes, sir. Ain't nobody so, so I mean, <laughs> I, be I mean, you know, I'll be there. That's let's keep it real, man. Let, let, so, so let me say this, Doc. Man, I, I had an interview with, with, with uh, one of the kids, one of the kids, um, uh, John Walker III. Yeah, uh, three times swag champion with the TSU basketball team. Yeah, man, I, I used to coach him in AAU when he was 13 years old, man. So now he's about 23. So he, yeah, y'all do the math. This kid. Is, you know, in, in candid conversation, you just talking about how like TSU just don't support like that, and, and, he, and it's not in a, in a malicious way that he said it. It's just it is what it is. TSU is a commuter campus. We all know this. It's the same thing. You know, my my thirty nine year old ass was twenty three year olds like him. It's the same thing I observed. Yeah. It, I mean, it is what it is, man. Like, when do you ever fix that? The answer is never. The answer is never, bro. Yeah. Like. Prayer View and Texas Southern fans gotta change their mentality. And and I mean, I'm just I'm just critical, dog. Like I I just mm -hmm. don't I, I'm not for the excuses. It's like you yeah. show up to the, to the game or you don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's just frustrating because I'm, I'm with you, bro. I, I want Texas to be like you know mm -hmm. what, what, what coaches call it, it's like the Texas two step. Right. And then they, they mash the issue, they mash prayer view and go back to their thing. But it yeah. needs to be to the hard way. Right. I wish it was like that. It's just not. And, and yeah. I just, I just, I have problem. I have a problem with that. Fundamentally, have a problem with that. I just do, bro. Yeah, man. This is all going. Look, I'm just waiting for the season to start up. I need me some media credentials for 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 the Labor Day Classic because I'm gonna be down there. Man, holler me, Doc. I got you. All right, <laughs> I got it. Yes, I'm gonna need bro. It. I got you, Doug. Hey, if you, if you talking about it, I got you, bro. Real talk. I know, I'm real. I'm talking about it. I'm talking. I'm, I'm real. Hey, I'm real hey Mr. Hook. Hook. Mr. Hook. Mr. Hook. Mr. Ford. Mr. Doc. Yeah. This was very intriguing. This was very intriguing, man. Uh, I would love to be on the show again another time, Doc. Uh, uh, y'all have a good. Oh night. yeah, I got you, man. All right. All right, now night. you have a good one, bro. Appreciate your love and respect for Texas Southern. Okay, y'all yeah. have a good night too. All right. Peace, 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 Mr. Ford. Peace, brother. Okay. Have a great one now. Man, it was good. It was good to have that 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 um it's good to have that that this panel right here because yeah, you don't even you know, when it get come down to it, I'm gonna try to have a panel like this every 
I want y'all to do it like every Tuesday, the way we just talk number straight football and mm-hmm. get a you know representative from each school on mm-hmm. here. So it it would be it would be good for everybody to come up and and speak their piece about their uh their institution. And I'm just gonna be neutral, but even though I'm a Jack State, you know what I'm saying? I still I'm gonna be neutral because I'm gonna know I already know what's gonna happen. <laughs> that, I already know. Important that you get guys like us, because again, man, the, the blue bloods are blue bloods, man. And, and oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I I fully acknowledge I don't hate. I, I accept reality where reality is to be accepted. So I talk for you know, people like myself at Prairie View, Texas Southern, um, Alcorn, you know, um, uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff and, and so forward. Yeah, we got to step up to 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 the table, man. Like, cause we at the kitty table, and I tell people all the time, bro. Like, you can't sit here and, and, and shit on Jackson State fans and shit on Southern fans and Grambling fans because they arrogant, quote unquote. They oh, earn we, the we, right, we assholes. <laughs> yeah, but for real though, for real. I mean, you, you know, I, I tell DJ this all the time, man. I, I, I like dog. It, it, I, I might lose some of y'all. Jackson State fans are the worst because because y'all are so used to being great in the last, like we lined up at the beginning of the show, nine years. Yeah. Horrible, right? So, yeah, we was, we was terrible for seven years. Terrible. We was terrible, we was terrible, terrible. for seven years. Even Zoe said, you know, within that 20-year span between when we let go of Judge and the comedy and shit. Yeah. yeah, we was terrible. So I I know this, and I remember I love guys like Get Ready, man. You know, in in swag circles, and and, and I know most of y'all know who Get Ready is, man. He and uh Rough in the Swag, um, he was on the Swag page, you know, back in the early 2010s. So I remember all this, bro. I remember this stuff vividly. I remember being a a coach, and I was trying to act like I wasn't a coach and talking these swag circles, and people act like they know all this stuff. I'm like, nigga, I'm in these circles. I I know this stuff for a fact. So. you know what I'm saying? It's frustrating, but you understand that that's the culture. Like, everybody got an opinion because the, the fan base is the fan base. And I remember just trying to project being a Prayer View guy. Like, oh, man, we Prayer View so great because we want to swag. But then the day, yeah. there was a one-year thing. You know what right. I'm saying? You know, in, in reality. So I respect the swag for what it is. I, I truly do. But I want the swag to be better. So I know some people, again, my, my quasi-conservative talk, I may lose some people. And that's fine. But ultimately, again, I'm an alpha, bro. I, I'm I'm a prayer viewite. I'm a former athlete and a coach. I want the swag to be better. End of the day, right. that's what I want. And I, I love right. platforms like yours, bro. Where I can come and speak because I just want the swag to be better. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Miss Body says she she swackish. That's all right though. Your son played for a swag school, so that that overrides all that right there. <laughs> no, but you gotta explain to me what swackish. You gotta explain to me. You gotta explain to us what swackish is, Miss Body. But I think she said because she didn't go to a swag school, but her son. Oh, that's fair. All right, that's yeah, fair. Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Look, Andrew is the starting quarterback at Texas Southern University. Uh. He doing the damn thing, so um, hopefully he'll come back from his injury and um, be out there on the field just in time right before the season start. So yeah, but like I said, man, it, it's cool that we can get you know, like I said, we get into these spaces and, and, and talk, you know, sports and talk passionately, you know, passionately about about our institutions. Yeah, uh, uh, so I'm gonna need to get some people from. I know I have somebody from Valley on here. I need to get somebody from Pine Bluff. I need somebody from uh, well, I got my Bethune Cookman uh, 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 representative. I ain't think he's on here tonight, but uh, it sounds so I weird. Need, Bethune Cookman swag. <laughs> that sounds yeah, so- my my fam, you aficionado, uh, Mister Mister uh, Mister Campbell. I'm gonna catch him. I'm gonna give this to him so he can catch up on it and. Uh, like, look, dude, we, we just need to do something. Like, we could do this every Tuesday uh, when the season start up. And, you know what I'm saying, we could get off with talking about football and stuff and 
what what each institution, what t- each team got going on, and what they gonna, you know, what you want to see, uh, uh, for the next game and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm it's gonna good. put that into, yeah, I'm gonna put that into play, and um, we'll do that. But yeah, I need some media credentials for for the for the Labor Day Classic. I'm gonna need it uh, if we can. I gotta send that. See if they gonna have that link for the uh, Swag Media Day. Um, so, bro, I'm, I'm I'm about to put my I gotta put my name in there. I gotta put my I gotta bust some those down. So <laughs> I, I, I emailed you, bro. Please hit me All up. Right. It's not that hard. It's really not. All but, right, I got yeah. Let, 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 it's linked because um I, I believe in what you do. I like what you do, and it's not that hard. So you you get in the door and um. And I can have coaches on here, man. I've had, you know, multiple swag, you know, and um, HBCU coaches on my channel. Um, yeah. Because I, I just think I love our story being put out there, you know, because it's important. And I love the last two years that people, you know, there's actually a loud microphone now to swag, MEAC, uh, CIAA, sports. And now, yeah. now we keep the door down. You can't deny us now. And, right. and I love it. You know, everybody got their own flavor to it. I mean, you know, shout out to everybody who's doing their thing. You know, I got my own way. You got your own way and, and so on and so forth. But, bro, j- just uh, I emailed you. Please hit me back. And I, oh, I got you. I just <laughs> seen it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I just seen it. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. You have a good one, bro. Yes, sir, man. As soon as everybody in the chat, man, thank y'all for supporting because it means the world to me that even if you disagree with everything Hoop Jargon said, that you care enough to listen to swag sports. That is the only thing I care about. And I thank you, Doc, for uh, having me on the show, bro. Until next time, man, you know, bong bong, man. Bong bong. All right. Man, uh, it was a good night, y'all. So I I enjoyed this. I am six, look, I am six people away from, I'm six subscribers away from 1,500. I need six more people to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we. It's not every day that you get a panel like that that talk number straight football and, and other things that's going on in you know in the HBCU world. Uh, but I had I need six more subscribers, and if you haven't done it yet, I um uh, you can uh become an Overdrive fan as far as joining. Uh, it's number four ninety nine. Everything that you do with uh. As far as joining the channel with the membership perks, all the notifications you'll get, um, it all goes back into the channel. It does not go into my pocket. It all goes back into the channel. So, we, you know, the channel, you know, we got to keep this going. The channel, we got to pay bills with the channel um, uh, to make sure that this channel actually is successful. So uh, if you haven't done it by now, make sure, like you see, you, you see it down there. You see it down there. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Become an Overdrive fan for four ninety nine, and hey, you'll love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. Uh, but, but like I said, we just need six more people to get fifteen hundred, and we're gonna move on to two thousand, y'all. Um, thank you, Miss Joyce. Thank you, Miss Joyce. I appreciate it. I, I truly appreciate it. G mini, thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody that showed up, showed out, all the questions that was asked, uh, listening to to this uh, the panel that we had early, you know, today tonight. Uh, we gonna keep doing this, especially for football season, where I'm gonna do a Tuesday night panel show and get almost get everybody from each school, each, you know, that's a representative of each school. I need a Pine Bluff rep up in here too. So if you find somebody that's a Pine Bluff rep. Rep, tell them to come on, join the show. But um, this has been another HBCU Overdrive live stream. Make sure you like this stream, share it, and comment because it helps the algorithm. It puts us, try to put us in there for recommended videos so we can rec- everybody can recommend this channel. Also, the but the most important thing to do is to subscribe. That's it, and that's all. It's not hard. All you do is just hit that button. And then hit everything. Hit that notification bell. Put it on all to get everything HBCU Overdrive, okay? But 
until then, uh, we will be back on either tomorrow or Thursday, more likely on Thursday. And we'll try to see what we can come up with. If you have any ideas, email me at hbcuoverdrive at gmail.com. If you have any ideas for the show, um, I'm be okay. Yes, I'll be okay. Uh, but other than that, man, as always, y'all, y'all be blessed. Y'all stay safe, and most of all, y'all stay dangerous. Until then, back on Thursday, We're gonna be back on Thursday live in the dungeon again. I'm out of here. Peace. Thank you.